It is your boy, QB Passport Flexin. Back with another live stream today, Friday night. Tonight, we're going to have fun. Let me just turn this down just a bit. Uh, salute to Kings with the 999. Thank you, sir. Get the mood right. You know, your boy, QB, grinding, working out. Man, last week, I was out there in Tijuana for this fight. The week before that, I was in Cancun with the main. You know, life is good. The champ is in the building. Uh, let me just get a one in the chat to make sure you guys hear me. I'm not muted. Just give, just give me a quick one, please. That's right, Ronnie Travels. QB Bully is back. The champ is here. Okay, Uncle Guns gave that one. I salute, salute. Mm -hmm. 27 people in the building get the likes up. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. And I got to break down the story between myself and Milano. But it's related to LARPs, Black Pill Doomers, True Force Mongers. Nothing against those guys. El Champion. That's right. So, Milano, in case you guys don't know who this guy is. 
This is Mr. Milano. Shout out to the Andrew Show. Giving this guy the name Dennis the Menace. And tonight, I want to tell you guys a story, but also I want to give you guys a lesson, okay? I'm a big proponent on self-improvement. And that includes time management. That includes positive energy. Having a good outlook on life and being productive. As men, we can get distracted very easily by women, work, and habits that are not conducive in our life, okay? So you have to have self-discipline. With this guy Milano here, unfortunately, he lacked a lot of self-discipline. We as men, we make mistakes. Okay, I mentioned this previously, but prime example, QB got a DUI in 2015. Damn. Whew. In two years, it's almost going to be 10 years, but it's off my record. I did the class. I suffered, okay? I went nine months without employment, and that was rough. I said, you know what? I'm never going to do that again. I gave the state of California damn near $10,000, including hire an attorney. That was a waste of money! Which is the very reason I do not support drinking and driving. If you're going to drink, drink in your house or go call a damn Uber. But what happened was I was leaving Manhattan Beach, two exits away from my house on the 91 freeway. A shorty nearby me texts me like, hey, come over. Drop the phone. QB fumbled. Drop the phone on, on the um, car floor on my side because I was just trying to lower the music. CHP was right behind me. I swerved just a little bit. I didn't even swerve out the lane. Like, I just hit the dot. For like two seconds, but they were right behind me. Whoop, pulled over. Get out the car. Have you been drinking? No, officer, I don't drink. It's against my religion. And I, I said that several times before. And they were shocked. Uh, we're going to do a sobriety test. Damn. Fell that motherfucker. I was what? I think the limit is 0 0.8. QB was... Oof. I think it was like 1.6. So, they took me in and pounded the car. I spent a night in jail. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got out the next day. But I said to myself, that will be the one and only... So I do not encourage you guys to ever drink and drive. You have Uber, uh, worst case scenario, sleep in your damn car, put the keys in the trunk, and don't go nowhere. So I made that mistake and I learned from that mistake. And that's part of the reason I'm a passport bro. Cause I ain't gotta chase ass anymore uh, getting drunk from the club. No, no. But this guy, Dennis, after me telling him that story, did the exact same thing. And crashed. Which is even worse, okay? Yeah, I was almost double the limit, but I, I didn't crash. I didn't have any accident or anything like that. He crashed. 
And I'm saying like, all right, you have the booty call, I get it, but then you're paying for ass here in the United States like these black pill doomers. Illegal, illegal. Well, QB, you're watching my penis. No, I'm not. It's against the law. Me paying for a prostitute in the United States is not worth my livelihood. But when you tell these guys factual information, they get very upset at you. So you're doing that. You got the DWI, and then you're still flying out to go be with pros overseas. Again, I'm not judging anyone's life or what they do, but like I said in the beginning, you have to have some self-discipline. When I got this passport here, I said, you know what? No more girls in California. No more American women. Okay? Conscious decision. Do I have many opportunities? Absolutely. But I said, look, if I'm out here dating, clubbing, then going overseas, I'm not going to be able to save my money. You know, I'll be tapping into my savings. Like, it's, it's not worth it. Self-discipline. So a lot of these guys, because they lack the self-discipline, they end up coping and indulging into degenerate behavior because they're not mentally tough. You have to set goals in life. You have to focus. This guy was hurt. When I made that true force monger video. Because it affected his soul. After being convicted as a sex offender. Which I didn't his information because QB don't dox people. But you know, the haters say that I do. No, I don't. Okay. I said, you know what? We got a motherfucking problem here. He was still awarded with a passport. So you have to be very thankful and say, you know what? I've been convicted. I think it was sexual battery or sexual force. It's a felony. He has an actual felony. It's not a misdemeanor. It's a Felony. He's not registered as a sex offender. They probably talked it out, you know, with the DA or whatever. But he has a felony for a sex crime. That is factual. I will be kissing my passport every night after overcoming this. But because He's a narcissist. His ego got the best of him. And so when we became friends, shout out to the big homie. Uh, you're a legend, sir. And QB will get you on the show soon. Make sure you sub to LFA. Okay. This man has held it down for the longest. We're talking when Sandman came on YouTube. Always positive. I even challenge LFA and I apologize because of them damn doomers. You know, bad energy. But this, this man is a wholesome American man. And he wants the best for people. So sub to his channel. Thank you, LFA. I appreciate it. Uh, we got another super chat here. Lamar Thomas salute. But do you got to expose him like this? Again, brother, I'm just giving you the factual information, all right? 
This ain't no speculation. He 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 crossed the line with me several times, okay? And I, you know, I'm being real. Like I'm not painting this guy in a bad life. I'm just giving you the facts. All right? Guys like him I know it's going to be hard in life because they've been dealt with a bad hand. All right. Now, one thing I will say, I do apologize for telling him that he has bad genetics because I said, look, normally people, when they're mixed, because he's black and white, they got supreme genetics. You know, they got the good hair. They're tall. You know, they're fit. You, I mean, and even f females that are mulattoes technically most of them are very attractive women. But he got the bad hand. And so I think that really affected him, that triggered him. I used to talk to this guy, but I would give him self-improvement advice. I would say, hey, Milano, if you want genuine desire from women, you have to self-improve. You got to lose the weight. You can get a hair transplant or you can go bald. QB got the hair transplant. Shit looking nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girls be like, oh, you 28, 29? Uh, you know, I'm in my 30s. But I lost the weight. I did the work. I self-improve. And that's why I'm here to preach to you guys the importance of that. He did a great thing for the travel community. It's like, hey, I don't have a lot of money. I like to travel. I, I like to be with women. I'm a pizza boy. Okay? And this is how you do it. If he just stuck to that information on his channel, instead of roasting guys, you got to choose your own battles in life. He would be okay. But he chose QB Bully. And I had to knock him out to the floor. I had to give him that TKO. And I think you better let it go. <laughs> Looks like another TKO. Yeah, I had to give him that NyQuil. Several, and we're about to see the film. <laughs> but in all sincerity, I wish the best for this guy. Okay? People warned him, like, you know, QB's a big guy. He's 6'3", 225. You are, I think Milano's like Five five two zero six. I mean, a guy that built going against me has no chance in hell. Literally. And I say, hey, you may be upset at me. We can make this bet. The original bet was a thousand dollars. I'm like, hey, man, I'm not. I'm not going to just fight nobody just to fight them. I got better use of my time. So, originally, uh, Carrie, chill out, man. <sighs> Pause. Look at you, man. Pause. You see the social awkwardness? You know, Spicoli, really quick. You, you're great on LFA streams. I need, I need the same energy on mine. Seriously, the same energy. I need you to be respectful. I, I did not want to kick you off last night, but we'll, we'll go into more detail about that later. So I said, look, the original bet was 1000 He can afford 1000 so I knocked it down to 500 500 We made it happen. We knew a mutual contact, Baja Tours, and he flew out here. 
He paid me. He stepped up. But one thing I will say about Milano, he, he was a man of his word. So we got to give credit to him. And by him removing his YouTube channel, it was to focus on improving his life. I understand. I'm going to have trolls. I'm going to have haters. Shout out to HB. I'm about to promote your channel, Brody. And I got to get an interview. I need, I need y'all to convince me to get out there to Asia. Uh, there's a brother called Game Abroad. He had him a okay Asian girl, Filipina. Uh, I'll, I'll reach out to him for an interview as well. Well, I wasn't feeling the face, but the body was nice. The body was nice. But... A lot of people telling me, like, QB, you need to get out there to Asia. Okay, yeah, you've been dipping in them senoritas. Cool. But go check out the Asian women. So I got to do that. But anyways, he flew out to Tijuana. was a man of his word. We went to the gym, alpha boxing, and we made it happen. So without further ado... Let me play a couple of these clips here so you guys can check it out. Uh, one second. I want to play one of my clips first. Okay. So this is me at the gym. Let's see if I can share a screen. Yeah, I'm going to send you the link. Just give me like another 10 more minutes while like I discuss this stuff and then I, then you can hop on. But I also do have a guest looks for real because we got to break some other stuff down. But I got you. Okay. Uh, QB is going to the cloud on this. All right. So self-improvement. Get in the damn gym. Go work out. That's QB. This is what I want you guys to do. Stop being a damn doomer. Get off your ass. Pause. Put down the fucking potato chips. Stop jacking off at 3 o'clock in the morning. Stop eating ice cream. Let go of processed sugar. So that's me right there, man. You know, getting getting ready for this damn fight. Um, this is your uh, my my opponent. Let me share this again. Um, hold on. Whew. Your boy Milano. <laughs> you sure ain't gonna show up. Like you ain't gonna show up if you wanna. <laughs> That's him getting it. That's him getting it. Shout out to him. Working out, grinding. Damn, so that other gym what? Yeah. All right, so let me show you a couple of the highlights here. Uh, and by the way, HB, we're gonna we're gonna go to your channel, brother. All right. Uh, if you have not sub to HB Gone Global, please do that. Sub to this brother's channel. He was in attendance of the fight. And uh, you're about to see this knockout here. All right. Uh, yeah, the quality is great. We'll play this in 4K for you guys. Right now, I'm in Apple Gym right now. Got, got QB Flex, you got Fat Boy over in the corner over there. So this was a nice gym, by the way. What's up, man? You ready to get it on? 
Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Mulano in the black trunks. We got QB Flexor in the, in the red trunks. QB throws a jab. Mulano's got Mulano's on the rope. Oh, wait. Hold on. I still think this is part of round one. <laughs> oh, let me let me skip through this a little bit. Hold on. Let's go. One second here. Okay, I think this is like round three. Yeah, Let's I go. think this is round three. All right, you know said he got a, he got a couple. Of hits on me. I'll give him that, but he hit with zero power. <laughs> How you feeling, champ? Tired. Come on. Hey, get, hey, get us some water. Where you want it? Where you want it? Where you want it? Where you want it, man? Where's water? 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 Watch the back of that head. Let's go. Come on, Milano, stop falling on the ground. Stop, stop falling on the ground. He ain't hit you. Mm -hmm. Get up. That was the third time you fell on the ground. I don't know if you want to call that a knockout, but. Hey, stop turning your body. Square up, QB, let's go. Come on, QB. Move your feet. Come on, Milano. <laughs> Come on, he ain't even hit you. <laughs> All right, it's almost over. I was wind directed, man. So your boy, the champion, victorious. I did an interview afterwards. Won the money. And that's it. The 500 came through. No complaints. Um, HB, if you're still around, if you want to come on really quick, we can talk about it. Uh, I do want to play this other clip one second here. This is going to the gym. All right. Now, I will be honest, QB did hit, uh, I did hit the Chinese food play. Oh, what? Did I remove this video? Really? I think I removed this on accident. Wow, okay. All right. Um, HB, if you're around, if you want to come up really quick, you can. I'll drop the link just for you. And looks, Pharrell, hit me up, man. Because I want to discuss the other part of the stream. But HB, you can come through. All right, the link is in the chat, but I'll send you the link directly. One second here. Everybody get the likes up for QB. Hit that like button. While we wait for HB Gone Global to come through.
Okay. All right, HB is here. All right. HB, what up, player? What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, smooth life. Just give me about five to ten minutes, and I'll I'll let you on too. All right, just let me wrap with him really quick. Uh, so thank you for being the cameraman uh, at the fight in Tijuana. Much appreciated. Yeah, man. I, I I meant to record more of it. I wanted to get the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I meant to, I, um, I had it in my mind to bring my damn uh, my action camera, but I had right. forgot it, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, be honest with you, man. I was really like on that energy where I was gonna smack him up for talk for him talking all that shit. You know what I'm right. saying? Online mm -hmm. and shit, but yeah, I forgot. I had forgot my camera and shit, and then I started um, BSing around with what. With a dude I knew that that showed up there, I, I met him like you know what I'm saying like two years ago, and he just happened to be there. So I was kind of you know what I'm saying messing around right. with him and shit, and I was I didn't get a chance to record everything, but yeah, man, it was, like I after I seen seen him in person, man, I was like, man, this dude is a chump, man. I'm like, I'm not even gonna like you know what I'm saying. I'm not even gonna press him about that shit because I'm like it, it'll look bad on me, you know what I'm saying. So I mm -hmm. just kinda, I just kind of trolled him the whole time y'all was fighting and shit, you know what I'm saying because. Man, this I was like, all right, man. All that talking, man. A lot of these cats be talking all that shit on goddamn line. Don't even know how to fight. So I'm like, let me, let me, let me, let me just chill on this dude, man. Right, real quick. Shout out to Just John with the two dollars super chat. Milano give Mayweather vibes. <sighs> I don't know about that because Mayweather knocks people out, and he wasn't able to do that clearly. Uh, so. Inform the audience really quick about Milano. We we know he's kind of special. Um, he ended a lot of ties with a lot of passport bros, including myself. Uh, what was your experience with Milano? Man, I don't even really want to talk about that dude, man. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, this shit over with. You know what I'm saying? What I've seen is... It's, it's no point me even like really speaking on him no more or even mentioning his name no more. It, it really mm -hmm. like this is like I was waiting for you to do this live, so this is my last time really, really, really even talking about this guy at all. You know right. what I'm saying? Because like I don't think about this dude at all. Like a lot of times I I go on Razor Razor Rays live and this guy in the damn chat like talking shit talking shit to me and shit. I'm like damn tagging me in videos and shit like put my name in his videos i'm like well, man like, what's up with this dude man right like, he was tagging me like as if i had the fucking cooties dog <laughs> like 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 we're playing hide and seek i'm like bro i do not care all right making I, false accusations like everyone um but go ahead yeah, I wasn't even planning on making that video and posting it on my channel, man. But I was like, I had to get this last one out and be done with it. You know what right. I'm saying? Ozzy, really quick. I do have stamina, but when it comes to boxing, bro, it's on another level. Like, I was good for round one, half of round two. But when you're boxing, like, they're one of, like, supreme athletes. I think... They're more conditioned compared to like football, basketball players. That's an, another level. Like boxers and swimmers are very well conditioned athletes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I told you, I told you, man. In the beginning, I said, man, you better pace yourself, man. I'm like that. Mm -hmm. Like when you fighting and shit, man. And you boxing. That shit gonna take a lot of you. Take a lot of took a lot of you. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. yeah, my whole thing with him, man. Like I told him something like. I told him something private and he was like blasting that shit in the damn chats on Razor Ray. That's what that's what kind of like, you know what I'm saying, pissed me off. I'm like, bro, like what the fuck? I'm like, bro, why are you telling my business? I mean, it wasn't it wasn't no secret, you know what I'm saying? I was just telling him, like, you know what I'm saying, a lot of a lot of chicks who come here from like Brazil and shit, they right. really like check, they really not checking for you American dudes like that. You know what I'm saying? They only like fuck with like white dudes and shit like that. Brazilian why, girls in San Diego, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was like, man, them girls like really, you know what I'm saying? They really mm -hmm. not like when you go to when you go over there, it's different, you know what I'm saying? But when they come here, 
they ain't really trying to fuck with no brothers like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Not, now, I'm now I will I will be honest. I did meet me a Brazilian girl, curly hair, in New Orleans. I went out there with my cousin. And my cousin's like a pookie, right? Uh, we went to the nightclub. We went to a ghetto-ass spot over at the French Quarters. I'm like, bro, why, why did you take me here? Like, come on now. And there was like a bar slash club across the street where it's, you know, a little bit more diverse. At the ghetto spot, he felt cool. But at the club where it was like, you know, white girls, Spanish girls, mixed people, I felt more at home. And that's where there was a Brazilian girl from Tulane University was showing me a lot of love, you know? But San Diego might be a different vibe. Yeah, because, I mean, some of the girls that come out here, they got money and shit, so. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, man. But he was like, he was trying to clown and shit to my nigga ain't, to my, to my nigga ain't got no no chicks and shit. I'm like, bro, stop playing. Bro, I told you one instance, you think that's the whole totality of me. I'm like, bro, I'm like, you don't know shit about me, bro. You really don't know me how I get down out here, bro. Right. I was like, man, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But that's the only thing you do is just troll, 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 troll. And I was like, bro, I, I didn't really come online to troll and do none of that shit. I just came. I just, you know what I'm saying? I created my channel to travel. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, show like how I move around and provide mm -hmm. guys with travel information. Like, you know, not none of the foolishness, but he wanted to, like, you know what I'm saying, bring me into the foolishness fold. So I was like, all right, I'm about mm -hmm. to smack you because I don't play around like that. Right, and and by the way, HB Gone Global is about my size as well. Pause. Like he's what you're what six three, six four around there? Six two. Six two, yeah. So he's a he's a big guy and Milano was talking foolish to HB and after the fight, Milano told the guys at Alpha Gym, like, hey, can you escort me to the Uber because I don't know if I'm gonna get jumped? Which we weren't gonna do anything to him. Well, They're like, hey, look, and I mm -hmm. and I really throw these hands because I do miss martial art. I, well, I used to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then you know what I'm saying. I should scrap like a lot coming up. So, like you know what I'm saying. That's why I was. That's why I really impressed him when I got there because it, man, I was like, I don't like picking on people who like that's less than. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, like I just came in there, trolled him a little bit, and left. Because if I really wanted to, I would have knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Like when I got there, <laughs> I just like I just I just called him a little few little names and shit. And I was like, all right, man, whatever. And, and, and by the way, I'm not trying to put all your your personal out there, but HB gave me last minute lessons, and this guy served in the service for you know for the states here. So he's a vet. He's a military vet. Um. So this is a guy you don't want to mess around with at all. Period. Are you still there? Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think he didn't know what he was up against. But what's your opinion in regards to a guy like him and and self improvement. Like, what steps do you do you think he needs to take to self improve? I don't think he can improve on nothing, really, because looking at his genetics, just seeing him in person, I was like, uh -huh. man, he's like Homer Simpson. <laughs> like, I mean, okay, if you want to talk about improvement, this man got a long way to go. That man have to like, he have to like go on a serious regimen of getting in shape, you know, uh -huh. and like getting a damn hair transplant. Cause right. he already he already looked funny looking, you know what I'm saying. Oh, we so can he, pull up the hairline real quick <laughs> for shits and giggles. <laughs> it's gonna take Go a lot, you know what I'm saying. But right, the dude, the dude is a, a perfect man in a in a in a in a low budget type dude. You know what I'm saying. The dude like mess with chicks at the of the bottom of the barrel. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, he he really, really he, he brags dude. about getting. Black girls in North Carolina, but it's like the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, man, he be like he be flexing about these bottom and barrel chicks. I'm like, man, he's sending me like tagging me in videos. I'm like, bro, them chicks is trash, man. Like that, man, bro. I don't even look at them. Like I don't even pay them chicks 
them type of chicks like that, no attention. So they ain't nothing to brag about. Right. Oh man. Hold on. This shit is hilarious right here. One second. I think no, I posted gotta, this in my should, community tab, but this you should have ran the highlights video. That's the funny shit, the highlights video. I, you should have you should have played that one. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Star Bowl Seven, man. Uh hair transplant get rid of the glasses or i mean pause no homo but if he just go bald and lose the weight he can pull off maybe a vin diesel i don't know but the, the, the I don't, dude man the, 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 i don't think that dude mixed race man i think he's a white man because like how he like the, like just some of the shit he say he just said a little, a little racist you know what i'm saying stuff you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying i didn't like just having a conversation with him probably, you know, and then one time he told me, oh, I'm, I'm, I got the best of both worlds. I'm, uh, I'm a I'm a white man and blah, blah, blah. You just mad because you ain't white. I was like, what? I'm like, that's weird that shit to say. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm like, bro, get out of here with that shit, man. Right. And shout out to I'm Andrew like, Show. I be getting all the girls, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. All right, man. Right. Shout out to Andrew Show. Yes, he was banging on grannies. If Kenny Kim was still alive, we would have had that remix with Milano, you know, on the grannies. I, I believe this man paid for a girl that was like, uh, I, I don't know, like over 55 plus. Yeah. Like, who does that? You know? Look, the, the main reason he really got mad at me, he got mad at me because I didn't want to watch a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. The dude was sending me private, like he kept sending me links to all them damn bottom of the barrel videos of him just mumbling and rambling, going on and on about, you know what I'm saying, the Matrix and, you know what I'm saying, traveling and shit. And I was looking, so I looked at a couple of videos and I seen that there was nothing of value to me, you know, because I've been doing the traveling shit, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I don't, I don't mess with, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, upper echelon type chick. Not even right. my, not even pro pro level chicks like the chicks that's in my videos that I'm walking with. Those are regular chicks. I don't I don't put pros in my videos and parade them around and act like they're my girlfriends. You know what I'm saying? All that shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? I, he he sent me a link of this damn video when he was down in Salvador, some 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 like hole in the wall country where he was like going to this like mess with these like these like two dollar hordes and shit. And I was like, bro, I don't want to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. He got mad at me about that shit. That's how we fell out really initially. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, bro, stop. I'm like, stop sending me them damn dusty ass goddamn videos. Because every time I check my damn, I get a hit a message like every other day on my damn, on my, yeah, um, you, what's, on my you, own Facebook shit. He's sending me a link to some dust, some dusty ass video and shit. I'm like, bro, I don't want to see that shit. Right. You, you just had enough, man. Like, it's not even quality chicks, man. Like, they don't send, don't send me no shit like that, man. I don't want to see that shit. Mm hmm. Mm. And so we're going to play the highlights real quick. It, it's kind of similar to er, er, earlier. But I. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just him. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Just him walking out, man. It was fucking hilarious. Two people's a jam. Milano's got Milano's on a rope. I always mm -hmm. trying to do the boys like how they used to call them fights back in the 1950s and shit, 1930s. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go, Milano! Let's go! Let's go, Milano! Let's go, Milano! Come on, keep your head up, Milano! Those oh, body go. shots were nut. Oh, oh, shit! Oh, shit! I feel like I'm watching the special events. What's that? What's that? Like, he hit you, like, uh, like, he came up from behind and hit you in the private. Go, Milano, put that like, down! Why would you do that shit? Like he hit right. in the groin, he hit in the groin, Good and then it was like, and then it was this one uh, punch where he like he's in the back of the head, and he knocked himself down. I was like, <laughs> right, but but I had a cup though. By the way, I had a cup because I'm like, look, I don't trust this dude. Just in case he wants to take a low blow, um, you know, I'm gonna be protected. Yeah, man. I've seen a lot of people right, talking to the trash and like, oh yeah, he would catch you with a lot of hits to the face. I'm like, bro, man, those, those, those hits look like, you know what I'm saying? Look, that's what he hits in the back of the head. Look, 
Right. <laughs> I mean, he got me there on that jab right there. He got me. That, that one I felt just a little bit. I, I ain't gonna even front. Right. No power. Watch back in the head. Let's go. <laughs> oh man. Hey, stop turning your body. Square up, QB, let's go. Come on, QB. <laughs> hey, that shit right there was so hilarious, man. Right. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, hold on. Hold on. God damn it. One second, bro. Yeah. Um Yeah, I I, I just I just don't understand, but l let's bring up the other guys. Smooth life, bug travel. Man, looks for old supposed to come through. I don't know what happened. He might have had a Tinder date. It's all good. Salute, salute, uh, salute. Gentlemen, welcome to the stream. Yeah. Salute, salute. Yeah, what's salute. going on, man? How you doing? On your, uh, your beat down, man. It was an easy money, man. Uh, like I said, man. All he got mm -hmm. to, do, had to do was anybody, and I'm not, you know, down value, you know, your, 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 you know, your boxing skills, but anybody average dude could have been in there and still whoop Mulatto's ass. Mulatto, I mean, right. as you can see in the videos, he was just falling by himself. I mean, that's, that's true. I mean, true, but he, he, he was just falling true. by himself. I mean, this is, yo, uh, but anyways, uh, so word on the street is, uh, I heard from somebody, uh, not, you about to fight Peso next in Tijuana? No, oh, they start. Cheating. No, Peso wants money, and nobody Peso. We're not paying you to come to fucking Tijuana. I'm sorry, bro. Not happening. Not you. You? No. Yeah. Et? No. Yeah, no. He's, he's telling people that, yeah. Uh, if if y'all want me to come to the uh, Dominican Republic, Colombia, or you know, in Tijuana, whatever, <laughs> y'all gotta pay for mm -hmm. my flight. I'm like if you. Out of everybody, you, I'm gonna pay for your flight. And he's saying, "Okay, if y'all want to fight me, what box me one on one, then come mm -hmm. to Africa." Man, that sounds like a thought, yeah. dog. Who, who asked another grown man to fly me out? Just go to right. Africa. Thank you. you know, so thank you, HB. You know, so so uh, but but props for actually, I actually have respect for Mulatto more than Peso Man. Because I'm a, right. little, uh, a man of his words, man. So I actually, uh, you know, like he earned my respect in that aspect, which is why yeah. I don't, I don't like, I don't want to talk shit about the guy. He at yeah. least uh, put the effort in pulling up, and he put money on the line, uh, and mm -hmm. he's, you know, he he stick to his promises. Uh, hopefully, hey, you know, he's happy. Hey, he Hey, yo, 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 Hold on, one at a time. Let Buck travel go, and then uh, Spicoli. So, 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 so okay. slowly, man. Just uh, hold on, bro. We'll, we'll, we'll get to you. Right. Uh, so hopefully, Mulatto self improves. He gets his life in order, you know, uh, and 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 go from there, man. Smooth up, right? Smooth life. I'll let you go. Yeah, smooth yeah. life and Spicoli. Yeah, just saying, QB, I sent you an email. I know I was supposed to do that interview. I did send you an email like about an hour ago, right before you started the stream. So it's Perfect. It's, 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 we'll, we'll set that up. I got okay. you. Okay, bet. Um, yeah, it's kind of going back on what Buck said, man, I, I have a level of respect for Milano because I don't really, for me personally, you know, you can do what you want. I don't exactly know what's all been said, but I have respect for Milano and the fact that, you know, he, he, he put up. He put up, he shut up, and he and he and he did what he was supposed to do. So I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go too hard on the brother, only simply because this man paid the money, this man showed up, this man showed heart, and I might be the only guy saying this. And QB, I love you, my boy, and I don't, I don't want like you think that I'm trying to like like discredit you winning anyway. But that was a close fight, man. I know I'm not because he and the the real, only reason why, the only reason why is because the style was gone in round two. When I was watching round two, brother, I was like, oh my gosh, is he about to get him up get him up on the floor or something like that? 
So I, I I give him respect in his fact that he put up a better fight than I thought he was gonna put up. He he, mm-hmm. he, he paid the money. He, he used his channel too, man. Like you know, so, you know. So that's why I'm like I can't go too hard on the on the man just because of that, you know. But so right. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna say shout out to him, you know. But I just no, we we, we can shot him out. All right. Yeah. I, yeah. I and and you know what he said to me after the fight? He was like, "QB, I appreciate oh. you." motivating me to exercise more so that's goes back to this topic about self-improvement versus cope all right okay if he exercises and lose weight and do a little bit less mongering i think he'll be okay in life yes yeah no no um no not for for sure that's all i want to say i do Shot, you know, respect to him for that. That's all I want to say. But go ahead. Hey, he, look, he got, he got balls showing up, but I ain't got no respect on that dude. That dude is a yeah, goddamn. I, yeah, I don't know. Exactly that dude was a damn was, sex offender, man. Too, so I, I can't speak. To I, don't <laughs> I ain't got no that. respect for people like that. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I, 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 Spoke, I, Spoke, I, Spicoli, go, go, go ahead and chime in. What, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are you did an excellent job. I mean, I could tell that. He obviously outweighed you by at least 50, 75, 100 pounds, which is put, puts you at a disadvantage, even if you were an excellent fighter. But I'm not going to give this guy props or kudos for one main reason or a couple of reasons, okay? I'm going to be mm-hmm. the contrarian here. I'm not going to simp for this guy like these other clowns are. Sorry about that guy. I'll tell you why. A guy like that is so goddamn out of shape. He's got no business getting in a ring like that. He could suffer a heart attack or something. Seriously, I'm serious. You know what I'm saying? And God forbid you were, wait, you're lucky it wasn't mixed martial arts and it was boxing because if it was mixed martial arts and let's say even me at age 65 with 10 years martial arts experience, one kick to his like shin or God forbid kneecap and this guy's not going to walk again. A guy like that is too out of shape Two, a guy like that should not be boxing because literally he could suffer a heart attack and you could have hit him hard enough to where he could have fell down and with his weight, he could have hit his head. So you did a great job, but the guy, yeah, I give him credit for having the nerve to go in there, but realistically, health-wise, he's in no shape to box anybody not even a guy, I don't box, you know, I'm in martial arts, but, you know, he's not even in shape to box a guy like me, who's 5'10", 145, one, you know, whereas you're 6'3", you know, you weigh like 200 plus. Seriously, you know, the guy is, what do you think about that? He's just, he's too out of shape to have even attempted that. If he had worked out and got down to your weight, or something it was different but i think this guy could have had a heart attack or some serious in other words i'm going to be honest with you after you hit him and all this it probably took this he's probably still hurting and reeling from your hits and stuff it's taken this guy a long time you could have caused serious damage to this guy seriously so what do you think about that the fact that he was too unhealthy to even step in the ring with you or even a guy like me can you elaborate on that guys yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, because, again, he has the YouTube channel. He has an audience. It was to please other people, which is probably the main reason why he did the fight. Instead of right. saying, you know what? Let me focus on other things. Like, I have a son. Uh, I just recently got a DUI. Ooh, I need to get true. back on my. Mm-hmm. Does he, what's his wife look like? Is his wife fat like him? No, he doesn't have a wife. He he. I think he has a girlfriend. What does um, she look like? Is she thin and slender? No, she's not. No. Okay. No. Okay, so even a so, creator like him, how many subs does he have, A, and B, even a creator like him? No, he, he got rid of his channel. After the fight, he got rid of the channel because YouTube, first of all, he wasn't really making no money. You know, like them doomers, they ain't really making no money Try to go after your boy. And two, 
he realized that, hey, this is not productive. Again, when it comes to self-improvement, you have to be productive in life. And if right. you have a channel that's not generating any type of revenue, do something else in life. Exactly. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let me make I a point here. Let me make hold on. Smooth life. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then you go back, Spicoli. I, I think that um, he said it, and I actually agree with him in the sense that uh, YouTube, man, it's a, it's a tough place, man. Like, he mm -hmm. said something that really stuck with me. He said that I would have never known who QB was if it wasn't for YouTube. You know, and it's it's true. It's like this place can make enemies, and you got to be tough, man, because you get people who want to dox you, people who want to fight you, people who might want to hurt you, et cetera. You don't even know these guys, guys from the can of paint, but you guys start this beef over the internet, and you, when you think about it, it's kind of this bullshit. It's kind of ridiculous how shit can start yeah. off just because of internet shit, you know. So I don't, yeah. I don't, see, I don't blame them for deleting the channel because it's like, like you said, I ain't making no money. First of all, number two. I'm just making enemies, you know, the fuck, you know, why would I want to have a channel where I'm just, yep. I'm doing, put myself at risk. Like it's, it's, you gotta be mentally tough for that, man. Cause you can really like, you know, cause you ain't got, especially when you're on your way up to, you can't, yeah. afford, you can't afford no security and shit like that. You know, it's yep. funny because I say that YouTube, YouTube stars or internet personalities, they're celebrities without the security. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they got the money to pay for no damn security. So um, yeah, it's, it's a stressful place, man. And he, I think me, he said it himself. He said that uh, the only, he, he said deep down inside, he said that it wasn't about winning this fight. It was about, you know, I just didn't want to do it anymore, you know? And yeah. I think that that's kind of what right. it was. And I got to commend him on that for being honest. Spokoli, go ahead. Okay, here's my point. They uh, took a survey of, like, I guess all young men under the age of 25 or 20 recently, and 25% of them said they wanted to be YouTube creators. Whereas 30 years ago, they would have said they wanted to be astronauts, firemen or whatever, right? So 25% of all young men want to be YouTube creators, which we know is impossible. So let me just say, obviously I'm a professional, semi-retired, award-winning EDM filmmaker, short filmmaker. So I built a lot of YouTube channels for a lot of DJs and whatnot. So my point is guys, if you're planning on being a YouTube creator, I'm going to give you some really good advice right now from a guy who really knows his shit because I've been on YouTube and building channels for guys since YouTube came out in 06, 07, whatever. I've been doing it since 08. Okay. First of all, guys, if you want to be a creator like QB is and build a channel, I highly suggest, just like being an actor or a rock star or even a film director, that you have a backup plan and a day job and you keep your day job like QB is until you become a successful creator. For instance, if QB builds his channel up to 100, 200,000 subscribers, which I think he will be eventually because he's the leading passport pro expert. Um, I appreciate I that, Spicoli. That time, he will be able to, plus QB lives an hour for me. Out of all the guys in the manosphere, QB and I, we're both Southern California. I'm not going to tell you. I live in Palm Springs. I roughly know where he lives. I'm not going to say it for his privacy, but we're within an hour of each other. So us Southern, and you're a native of California. I think. I mean, you've lived here your whole life, I assume. So us Southern California guys, just we stick together, especially he's the only other guy I know in the manosphere, so to speak, that even lives within an hour from me. So we, we live close by. So we're naturally going to have a lot in common, even though the age is different because we live in the same type of environment. So guys, keep your day job. Now, I want to make another recommendation for guys out there, which a lot of guys don't think about, but I'm going to make this point. If you don't want to be a creator because you have to come up with content, and let's face it, it's a hit or miss thing. You can be the greatest creator in the world, but if the audience doesn't like your stuff, nobody's going to watch it. You could put together shitty videos or videos like Nick Avocado where you're just eating all day and shit and you could get millions of views, right? So it's really a gamble. It's hit or miss. So here's my suggestion. If you want to get into YouTube, boys and girls, instead of being a creator, and you can still be a creator at the same time, here's what I would be doing since I'm a filmmaker. And obviously, if I'm starting out now, here's what I would do since I wouldn't want to be a film director like I wanted to right. in the past, make music videos. Here's what I would do, boys and girls. 
I would learn editing and become an expert on editing, whether you're using Adobe Premiere, whatever software. And then once you know editing, here, you know what the biggest need is for people right now? It's for people who know how to do post-production editing for a lot of these YouTubers who either create for their videos or their content. Think how many, I've seen ads run also for this stuff too. Obviously I'm not applying, but if you're a good editor and you hook up with even one or two or three, right. like let's say you have two or three guys like, you know, who have a few hundred subscribers. You can Get to the point, up. Spicoli. You're, you're going long winded here. Okay. Get to the you point. Can make over, you can make over a hundred thousand a year editing videos. Sorry about that. Ronin Travels, what's good, my guy? Sorry. <laughs> Yo, them, them Doomers is hating on you, brother. Oh, what's good? No, no way. He, 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 he's what a, a girl that's over uh, less than 30, 25 years old. No, it can't be true. mf -er, I got resources, damn it. Listen, how the hell, look, how the hell Milano gonna want to goddamn get mad at Demetrius Chata when he the one that's going out starting beef? That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's stupid shit right there to me. <laughs> yeah, I know, but w one thing I will say, HB Global, again, for his mental clarity as men, you have to get rid of distractions. I think this YouTube for him was a distraction. It wasn't being progressive in his life. So that's why he said, you know, again, like how uh, Smooth Vice said, I would have never known about QB if it wasn't for YouTube. And I don't need to make enemies with people that I don't know. And let me just read the super chat really quick, and then we're going to welcome Ryan Travels. Um, okay. Okay. Shout out to Mr. G. And Thank I think you, you're backstage. G. All right. Uh, what? Uh, let's see. What if you go viral? And you want to travel off of YouTube checks and donations? Then hack the passport name by tattooing on your arm. <laughs> Shots fired, bro. Thank you for the five dollars, though. Uh, Ronin travels. <laughs> welcome to the panel, brother. Yes, your thoughts. Hello. Welcome aboard. Go ahead. Ronan, are you there? Or are you on mute? Ronan, uh, looks like he's, he's off mute, but his mic may be having a problem. Okay, Mr. G, what's good, man? What up, player? Yeah, player. Yes, no, no, he goes, you're he coming goes, in loud and clear goes. now. Yeah, Ronan, go ahead. Right Ronan, Ronan, you're coming in clear. Go ahead, Ronan. Okay. Um, first, when I turn my computer on, for some reason, it, it, it's kind of slow booting up. Anyway, uh, I watched the fight, and I, I do have to uh, give my points, you know, uh, from somebody with a boxing background, you know, uh, and I heard what you said, Spicoli, but there's been plenty of big boxers back in the day. I'm sorry you don't know about heavyweights, but heavyweights come in all shapes and sizes. If he had worked out yeah, and did some things to build up his strength, he still could have had a better showing. I don't care if he was overweight or not. Okay. You got no, Butterbean what, what, out there. You got one, other heavyweights. Hold on, Spicoli. Let him speak. Let him speak, uh, please. So the fact that he was a, a heavier dude. The fact that he was a heavier dude is not the excuse. He he needed to build up his strength. He needed to follow up with his techniques. He had no he had poor head movement. He really wasn't putting anything behind his punches. That's why QB was able to allow him to punch in his midsection it was kind of basically laughing at him in the first round he had thank no you thank you his punches which means he had no strength yeah but it had nothing to do with weight too. don't give that man no excuse about his weight i commend him for showing up and being a man listen i commend him for showing up and being a man and and working through whatever issues much junk as he was talking on Razor Ray show. I was expecting a whole bunch more. How long? How long? How long? You say, how long the you Razor Ray show. He was talking for? a lot of mess, bro. How long he trained for? <laughs> a day. First I think all, maybe a wanted, month. He right. said he trained for like three or four months or something, wasn't it, QB? Yeah, I know. It was like, like a three months, months as well. 
I heard three months as well. Look, he was Rodan, talking all that. Rodan, look, he was talking all that cash shit about you know Rodan, what I'm saying, doing all that so, training and about him punching somebody. He was like, "Oh, I punched one guy. He, he was supposed he was to be a, like a former professional fighter, kind of and I got one hit on him." So he was so confident about and whooping somebody ass. Running, go back to background. So right there, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Time out. Time out. He said he had a martial arts background. He did on Razor no. Rays. He said not only did okay, he, wow. it, but he, he had some type of martial arts background. Oh, shit. So I'm like, what the fuck? Run really? You run don't know him. how to throw a basic punch, bro. Yeah, run you know, I, I grew up fighting. I grew up in Taekwondo and I, I started cross training okay. as a boxer before I went into the Marine Corps. So Thank you for your I know how to run it. It doesn't matter how big I am. I'm not going to help. Hold on, you know Spicoli. I mean? Hold on. Not even issue. Can I ask my question? Go ahead. And, and then after you ask your question, we got to welcome Mr. G. Okay, okay. So go ahead. Rundin, here's my question. I'm 65. I'm familiar with every heavyweight boxer going back 50, 60 years. Every one of okay. them. Name, name one heavyweight boxer that had a body type like that dude because <laughs> <none exists. laughs> they won. George Floyd. They won. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. George, George Foreman. Sorry. George Foreman. George I just Foreman. said George Foreman. No, wait. George Foreman no, wait. was an overweight George... senior citizen. No, listen, wasn't. listen. Not you like just him. asked me. Stop, Spicoli. Spicoli, okay. you just asked me. You just asked me. George Floyd in his second season of fighting as a professional was overweight. And he was knocking out all the heavyweights. George Foreman? You can't say he wasn't. George wait, wait. Google George. Wait, Foreman. guys. Don't wait. George That's Foreman. Just one. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Scott, wait. I like to do things scientific evidence. Guys out there, Google George Foreman and look at his image. And you tell me if he's got a body shape even close to the dude that Fox fought QB because he doesn't. Hey, what about Butter him? Bean? Shout out to Drew, uh, Drew G with the 199. I, I would agree. He has the Butter Bean body. What about well, we can still look up George Foreman from England. The uh, Ruiz dude. The little Mexican dude. Ruiz knocked out the box. That was George his shape from Foreman England. George Foreman never had bitches tits. George and, Foreman and, didn't and need a bra. George Foreman never and, needed and, a bra and, like that dude. What about Ruiz, man? Andy Ruiz knocked out the dude from England. He's a boxing listen, champ. Listen, Spicoli, you missed the key point. Right, right. Listen. 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 Spicoli missed his key points of statements. He, 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 he has selective hearing because of weight, work out. They strain. Train. They do things in order to build up their punches. So all they have to do is put one glove on you in the right mode, and you're going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's science a thing is, called science. Right, right. If you're but, outweighing bro, your opponent. Wait, wait, you put bro, enough bro. pressure, and you got to knock out that heavyweight. Right, right, right. But bro, there's a thing called multiple rounds, and they last three to five minutes, and that means you have to have good cardio. And ca good cardio means you better be in physical fit shape beyond just punching, okay? This man said this man said he trained. This man got on other YouTube channels and said he trained. You can't defend a man when he says, I was working out for the last three months and starts bragging about his prior history right. as far as doing martial arts, and he had almost he had hit a guy and almost knocked him out. The type right. of punches that I saw healthy? that man throwing that night, there is no way is that in man hell. Healthy? Is he healthy? What? He's not. He's not healthy, though, is he? Why, why does that even matter? Why is that even a factor? Why? But that man, Because if he hey, goes in the ring and fights somebody, first of all, totally. yeah, if the man ahead. showed up and got in the ring, that's of his. You can't judge. You can't tell him. Well, you're not 100 percent healthy, so you can't you can't get in the ring. If he showed Facts. up, he oh. ran his mouth. He showed up like a man who deserved to get in the ring, get his ass whooped. That's the old way of doing things. You say you're 65. Back in the day, you got your ass whooped for opening your mouth. It wasn't about no knife. It wasn't about no gun. It was about getting of the course. ring, or you go out in the backyard. Of course. 
and you fucking duke it out. So that's what the fuck they did. Right. That's why guys like me have been in over 100 fights in my life. I've been in over 100 fights in my life. Stop making excuses. Mr. G, uh, if you want to chime in, brother. Chime in, Mr. G. Oh, T. Uh, yeah. I have a quick question, TB. Why was he in TJ? <sighs> is he a, does he go to the uh, uh, does, is he a passport bro? That fat dude, and does he visit? Does does he get laid? Yes, he's a passport bro. But but let Mr. G okay. chime uh, in, and then we got Rod that came in too. So uh, shout out to me. Mr. G. Hold what on, Spicoli. Let him talk really quick. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, good evening, man. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah, you, you're coming in loud and clear. Okay. Oh, good evening, bro. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, yeah, I came in on the on, on the end where the brother uh, Spicoli um, he was talking mm -hmm. about some things regarding you know uh, YouTube content creators, yada yada. But I, I I felt like he said some things that were um, that were very good, right? Uh, mm hmm in light of what you're talking, we've been talking about the last couple of nights regarding self-improvement and things of that nature. Um, I agree. I love how you're sticking to the topic, by the way. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I do, I do um, agree with you. And I do think uh, this topic of self-improvement, um, lately, there's been a few people that have been kind of talking about it regarding around the manosphere or black manosphere things of that nature and those people they were they were not welcome or you know celebrated because they want to talk about self-improvement because some people will rather be stuck on whining and complaining right um, and not doing anything to improve themselves at all and not doing the actual work that could solve some part of the complaining um in, in in light of what the brother said regarding like youtube content creators and things of that nature um i'm gonna say this and you saw you saw my super chat and and i think the brother ronan yeah. uh he knows he he, he he already know he already know my flow um let's not just let's not just talk about uh self-improvement and shit like that just because it's just milano um that you know some people may have had um may, may, may not have seen eye to eye with him and or didn't like him or things of that nature let's not just talk about self-improvement just with him and just because somebody else got a big youtube uh, uh, uh following uh which which uh some some guys in the in the youtube sphere they call that subscriber supremacy mm -hmm. subscriber supremacy it, 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 it subscriber supremacy you know when, when you have the subscriber account people will buy down to you even if you're about bullshit let's be brave right. enough to call people out even when they have a big youtube youtube following but but then again you know uh some people are lovable character and i guess that milano guy you know milano shout out to the brother i guess he may not have been that that much of a lovable character uh right. but let's not spare people because they have a big subscriber account and when they could they can do when they could use some self-improvement too thank you i well said let me just read this super chat really quick drew g big country the ufc fighter destroyed many guys i don't know who he is but uh i'm assuming maybe oh. he's overweight or oh yeah he he had a big belly and a long old beard. That's why they called him Big uh, Big Country. And yeah, he started mm -hmm. off at the uh, UFC trial type of TV show, made it into the UFC, got a contract, and yeah, he was wearing he was way laying the hell out of the guys. Big old belly and all. Okay. Yeah, okay. man. I mean, so a lot of man, you know, for him is like yo. He, he he was just falling by himself. I mean, he was mm -hmm. falling himself out. Like voluntarily, he he hit the the mat like at least six <laughs> times by himself, like punching you. I mean, how could you hit, punch somebody, and that person didn't punch you back, and you still fall on the mat? Dude had balance issues because he didn't man. work on his he didn't work on his footwork at all. 
You can tell coordination. He balance. And it, the, the balance His issues was, was, a, off. was Yeah. I think it was due to his big stomach. I mean, he had <laughs> conditioning. <laughs> it, there's no right. conditioning. <laughs> right. Uh, hold, hold on. We, we got Rod in here. Welcome to the stream, Rod. I appreciate you coming through. Your thoughts and opinions. And any questions for anybody on the panel? What's up, uh, QB? Yeah. No. You know what? Um, you know, most people don't know how to fight. Let's let's not even beat around the bush. If you if you were to ask Milano throughout your whole life, how much time have you spent shadow boxing or trying to? learn self-defense or whatever, he probably would tell you a few minutes. So it's mm -hmm. expected. But what, what I think what tends to happen is, and I think we live in a society where they push willpower. It's what you believe. It's But that's all bullshit. Excuse my French. No, 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 no. You're good. Tonight, we're going to let it rip, man. So, you know... Say, what, say what's on your mind. Don't hold anything back. Yeah, it's it's bullshit, man. You know, you guys know as well as I do. It's all about, I, I get this positivity and thinking positive, but we're human beings, man. There's going to be mm -hmm. days you wake up, you have a bad day, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Hey, man, that's just you. And then you try to work through all that. But we can't sit here and pretend we're going to be positive 24 hours a day, 365 days a week, and we're capable of everything. Unless you're right. putting in the work. He didn't put in the work. It's pretty obvious. But he believed he can get in the ring and whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It's a belief. I believe. But if, I, if I've been trained, what do they say? It takes 10,000 hours to, to, to really become an expert at anything. 10,000 hours to become a professional at anything. Yep. A professional at anything. So uh, how many hours we do we put in learning how to box? I've spent years, and I'm still – uh, I spent three years boxing – and I don't even think I, I think I'm good. I can defend myself, but I don't think I'm good enough. I'm, I'm an I consider myself an amateur after three years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you had to sit here and define Correct. your skill, I'm an amateur when it comes to boxing. But I know how to jab. I know how to hit. I know how to uppercut. So and then I spent years. The weird thing is most people that know how to defend themselves nine times out of ten, they're humble. It's crazy. And the ones that don't know how to fight, all of exactly. a sudden, there's the toughest guys in the world. Now, that's my opinion, and I'm saying this from a guy that probably spent seven years learning self-defense. I'm talking about boxing, wrestling. No, nah, Rod, you're exactly right, brother. You're exactly right. The ones that okay, know how to fight are usually the ones that are humble. Mm -hmm. uh, really quick, the we, we have Milano here. No, Milano's no, here. Should, should I let Milano on the panel? He's here. Yeah, yeah, let him in. Yeah, let him in. Let's hear his Absolutely. Mulano! Hi, Mulano. Hey, what's up? <laughs> let, me, let me just get off while I got to get off. Then y'all can say whatever y'all want. It's going to take less, less than a minute. So don't worry. Um, I just want to say, I just want to say the whole DWI thing with you talking about I was chasing tail. Let me correct that. This was chick was asking me to hang out. I wasn't pursuing her ass. I was just hanging out with friends. You know what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. a friend. That's all I was doing. She actually money? offered. Listen, she, she offered money? me. Spicoli, be quiet. Be quiet, Spicoli. Be quiet. Be quiet, Spicoli. Yeah, Jesus Go Christ, ahead. man. So, yeah, she invited me out to hang out because I used to work with her. She was pursuing me. You know what I mean? We, we talked on the phone, whatever. Um, uh -huh. I just hung out with her. I wasn't expecting nothing, whatever. Um, like I said, this wasn't off of me trying to get some ass, so I'll say that off the rip. Um, but she the, told uh, you to spend a night at her house, right? Yeah, she, she said she – listen, listen. She even begged, she even begged me to because she knew I was going to drive drunk. She literally offered me pussy, and I turned it down because I was like, <laughs> I, I don't feel comfortable. I don't, I don't feel comfortable at the house. So, anyways, yeah, you know, are you going to keep that to oh, 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 Hold on, Milano. You had pussy, but you want to drive home drunk and get a DUI. Come on, brother. Let me finish. You keep interrupting me, bro. You got room. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, so going back to what I was saying, you know, I drove drunk, whatever. I made my mistake. I already put that on a live. So y'all act like you act like you supposed to something. I already put that on the live because I want people to learn from my mistake. That's two. Number three, 
I don't really give a fuck what it, what what these guys say. Uh, HB gone global now. Respect. I don't even know that dude. Listen, you didn't call me a pedo to my face. You didn't say no sex offender stuff. So I don't care about none of that. At the end of the day, yeah. bro, you won. You should be happy. Why are you making a lie about this? It's probably because dude uh, irritating you by saying, yo, Milano could have had it. But that's something you got to deal with, bro. Your father was supposed to show up. He didn't do that. Don't be mad at me about the, the situations you got, bro. But take care. Have a nice life, man. You can have this YouTube shit for real, for real, man. Because I real live in real life, bro. Wait, wait, and a lot, a lot of these dudes on here is degenerate. Stick around. Stick around. They, they got Come questions for question. you, Milano. Oh, you got three questions. Quest. Oh. Okay, Milano, here's my first question. Let's say the chick to house you went to, <laughs> if you had decided to bang her, let's say, you know, what? since you're a bigger guy, and I'm a thin guy, I don't know. See, I, I knew, I knew get to the, the point, Spicoli. Get, get to the point. Motherfucker, you was a fucking bitch when I showed up, nigga. You ain't say shit to me, Milano. Look at look, look at him. He ran. See what I'm talking about? He ran. He, look, he think he want to talk shit. Look, Damn. he want to talk shit when I got them lead, but when I show up, that's a hit. He run. Wide as a church mouse. And, and by the way, my pops, the only hit. reason why he didn't show up. Hold on, I want to clarify. He went to go help my aunt move into our new condo so i said like yeah. you you ain't even gotta break your neck to come out here to tijuana this weekend when i'm about to go watch the cowboys at her house i'm like look gumbo gumbo on sun i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make that thank you thank you thank you yo that's look a real man that's a real son look look mm -hmm. check this out man i got the mother i still got the damn fucking screenshots of him but goddamn begging me he's about he don't know me like, motherfucker, I don't fuck with you, fucking cornball. Look, that's why you fucking ran when I came up. And then when I showed up and got damn TJ, and I said, what's up, fat boy? He didn't say shit. The shit on camera. Right. So I'm talking about saying uh, I ain't say nothing when it's on camera. Yeah, everybody saw it. I'll say shit to you right now. You know what I'm talking about? See, he a lame-ass motherfucker. They try to got them perpetrate like he's a bit, like he really badass. And then when I show up, he ain't got nothing to say. Are you talking then, to me? Who is a fucking goofball, man? You know what I'm saying? Are you talking to? Hold, hold on. Uh, to no. Spicoli. No, he's not. No. no. Hold on. Uh, chat. Everybody in the chat that's watching. One, if Milano's going to come back. Two, if he's retired for good. I Just out of curiosity. I want to know. And 69. Put a 69 in there. If you think his Lord story Jesus. with that chick is all LARPing and bullshit, put a oh. 69 in there if it's all LARPing and bullshit. Spicoli, because I don't know how I deal with you, man. Out. Like, my patience is really running out. All right. but... Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute myself. Okay. Everybody's putting you on. What have been drinking, man? <laughs> <laughs> what is I've been drinking, bro. Oh I'm God. like four deep, and I'm not even like belligerent like what? how he is. Hey, check this out, Mulatto. Check this out, man. Hey, if you want to go ahead, HB. Here, look, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give me another I'm one. So you go ahead. You guys rap really. At first, I wasn't gonna. You know what I'm saying? I was gonna let you live, but look, no, I, I will pay the, the goddamn the motherfucking boxing ring fee. You ain't got to put half on it. You know what I'm saying? I'll pay you to come out here and whoop your ass. So you talking all that shit? At first, I was like, nah, I ain't going to do nothing. But I knew you were going to say something when you came up. I wasn't even going to say Where nothing you if you said something. Man, don't worry about where the fuck I live at, man. Look, the thing is, look, the thing is, man, shut up, man. I don't even know your old dusty, crusty ass, man. Shut up. Look, Milano was talking all that shit. Look, I came to TJ and I pulled up on this motherfucker. I ain't no fucking fuck. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to goddamn do it. And that's just point, but I'm not. Hey, I'm not. I'm not, look, ready to fight bro, I'm not finna look, I'm not finna fight a goddamn elderly oh old God. ass white man. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> bro, I, break, I will break you in fucking half, bro. I'm not I'm not even playing, bro. It, it, I didn't come up right, here to fucking know, play. I, I didn't come up here to fucking play, bro. Cause I'm trying to tell you, you know what time it is. I will pull up on your ass. You tell me where the How fuck you at, I'll pull up on you? your ass. How I ain't got time for this shit, but hey, but I'm out though, man. Mulatto, man. Come you. come back up here, Mulatto. You know what I'm saying? He's not talking to you. Hey, come back up here, Mulatto. I'm gonna leave, man. I'm gonna let you come back up here, man. Hold on, hold on. Because we got up when I came up here. 
Milano, you fat fuck. Come, come back up. up here. Oh, you fucking guy, man. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought he was talking about Any, me. Anyway, man. Ronan, Ronan, no, let, let, let's go back to what, what we were discussing earlier. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah Ronan, okay. go, go ahead, Ronan, and I'll be quiet. Why is now, it Ronan. like it's, it's, so? Because you you know as well as I do, Ronan. Let me ask you this question. You know as well as I do. It take, you know most people that don't know how to defend themselves are the first ones to open their mouth. What's your experience? Absolutely. With that? I can tell you my personal. The loudest experience. one in the room is usually the bitch. Hundred percent. You, you know Straight what up. I tend to do? The loudest one in the room is usually a bitch. Even if they're in a large crowd, if he's right. selling wolf cookies, he's not the one that's really going to fight. It's one of his boys that are going to back him up. That's right. Right. Can, can I make a point? Here's my point, gentlemen. It's from after, you know, eight, ten years of martial arts, kung fu, karate. My point is this. It's not so much. Obviously, you have to be able to throw a punch. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, you have to be able to learn to take a punch. That's what you really need to do if you want to fight. You have to learn how to take a punch just as much as you need to learn how to throw a punch. Don't you guys agree? True. I do agree. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> every, no matter how good you fight, are, you're not gonna everybody's going to get punched. you got to learn how to take a yeah. hit. But a, a, lot, a lot of people don't really spar to where they're taking punches. Let's not even beat around no. the bush. When you're yeah. doing uh, jujitsu on the ground, a lot of that is nothing. There's no punches involved. But if you're standing yeah. up and you're punching, the only way you're going to punch are what two sport, two arts, I think, with boxing and uh, what is it, the Thai Muay, Muay Thai or kickboxing. Those are the only arts where you're actually punching. And chances are, how many people are putting well, kung on fu. it? Kung fu, you punch. Yeah, no, no. Most but... people, you're not actually taking a punch. You're only, only when you're sparring. I think those are the yeah, only when are, you're sparring. Only when you're sparring. Yeah, exactly. only, when, only you spar. when you're sparring. So when you say you got to be able to take a punch, let's not even beat around the bush. Not one person in this room, even if they trained, unless you're sparring, you're not taking a punch. No. You know what I'm saying? You're actually trying to avoid They're the right. punch at the end of the day. You're right. But even the best fighters will eventually, even when I spar, we're not supposed to. I'm not saying get punched in the face, but we are getting punched. Well, well, no, you got you have you have your headgear on, and then you have gloves on. So even no, we if, don't uh -huh. wear in my wait in my studio, we don't wear headgear. We don't wear pads. We, we All right, wear. hold on, Spicoli. So go ahead, Rob. No, I was just gonna yeah, say okay. he, he he said something. You got to be able to take a punch. I uh, mm -hmm. I said I replied with, well, how how often do people learn to take a punch? You know, there's only three instances that happens when you're boxing, kickboxing, or Muay Thai. And that's when you're sparring. It's not when you're sitting or, there training. Or, or even um, possibly UFC too, MMA. Excuse yeah, me. yeah, MMA. They're they're training to take a punch. Mm -hmm. No, but in bo in boxing, you learn to take punches. Think about boxing. No, no, you like, you boxing. sparring. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about sparring. We're not talking. We're talking about the you average. Oh, yeah. Said that already. Well, we're yeah, we're but, not talking uh, about you, professionals. Yeah. We're talking about the average person. Yeah. Doesn't learn to take a punch. Right. Your, the average your... person is hitting a bag. Hold on, Spicoli. Let him go. Let Rob go. No, so, 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 go so ahead, Rob. HB, uh, QB. He said. Uh, he said you got to be able to take a punch. And I said I replied with, "How often do people learn to take a punch?" And uh, the average person, it never happens. Right. Right. It never happens. So even if you learn to take a punch, the only places you're going to learn to take a punch in the boxing ring, Muay Thai, kickboxing. Or somebody said MMA. Well, that's MMA if you're for fighting professionally, but the average person doesn't know how to take a punch. Right. You're you're absolutely right. Um, no, 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 yeah, I was no, I was just saying that MMA is a, a one as well. You know, they they've got to do right. real life sparring and stuff. That's what I was just trying to say. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hundred mm. percent. So, no, but but I, I say that because uh, I, I can't think of anyone that. Is thinking to themselves, I got to learn to take a punch. They're thinking, how do I defend my face? How do I, you know, when you're when you're actually fit fighting, even when when QB got in the ring with Milano, at the end of the day, these guys don't train every day, so they're gonna thank use you whatever knowledge they have, whatever experience they have. That's all it is at the end of the day. They didn't train to get in the ring, so they're train they're getting in the ring based on their self confidence, their willpower, and everything else. And the and the adrenaline, like I'm not gonna lie, I had so much adrenaline to where the first round I had like I think I even had more energy yeah. after the first round, but all of a sudden 
all that energy just vanished away, and I'm like, oh no, you know. Did you hold mm -hmm. off on? Did you hold off on getting having sex before the fight and right after Spicoli. the fight? Did you rush into? Oh did you God. rush into one of those Tijuana bars? No, no, no. He no. asked so many different random out of the box no. questions that have no. nothing to do with the topic no <laughs> come back on the next stream spicoli you're in timeout man like come on bro come on man like you need a you need a um think, what what focus you need a, a video that says you're going to jail and put him in jail <laughs> yeah. like I love to give people chances and second chances, but like over and over and over. And he's a good guy. All right. I have nothing against him. But when you just splurge out stuff that's not on topic repeatedly, it's frustrating. Like we're talking about boxing. We're talking about technique. We're talking about other things. And then he goes off about sex. And I'm like, what the hell? And then he want to be with me, and I wasn't even talking about him. And then I don't know if them little comments were saying to myself about the, the hot hair, I'm a punk, and all that shit. Listen, I look, I did seven years in the Marine Corps. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I did, I did miss martial arts. Oh, separate when from I, brother. When, when, hurrah! Hey, when I was uh when I was in the ring, I mean, when I was in the boxing gym with you, um, QB, was I not trying to give you tips on how to throw a proper jab? Yes. And how to throw a goddamn yes. you know a right hook and how to yes. generate power from your fucking hips and shit. Yes. Was I not I that? So like these cats on here, you know what I'm saying? Look, I don't like when motherfuckers talking crazy to me and I don't know you. You know what I'm right. saying? Damn right. I look, I, I admit I, I, I got them got PTSD and I and I have a hot fucking head. And if you disrespect me and and talk shit and tell me you're gonna do this and that. I'm gonna pull up on your motherfucking ass, and I'm gonna pull your goddamn punk card. And, and I and I got yeah. these motherfucking hands. It ain't all about being humble. You talk shit to me, and you don't fucking know me, and I'm not talking to you, and you bringing that heat towards me. I'm gonna pull your fucking punk card, and that's just point blank. That's that's just what it is. Right, right. Hold on, let me just read the super I was, chat look, from. I went, I went to tier one. I didn't even have my passport. My, my car got broken too. Go get, ahead. Get right. on the meds, brother. Well, get on. Your no no, 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 no. <laughs> HB is a brother. I appreciate him pulling up and filming. Not just pulling up. He filmed the mm -hmm. shit. And, and you know, I'm highlighting your channel. But let me just read the super chat really quick. No cap. True force monger better than red pill addicts. That is a great question. Um... I'm going to go more of a true force monger because these guys know that, hey, the red pill is not going to save them. They're not going to waste their time trying to learn game and cold approach women, especially when they look like somebody like Milano. So I'm going to go on that side, but they're going to be humble about the situation. But go ahead, HB. Yeah, man, look, I, a week before, I told QB, a week before that, I lost my passport. Well, I, I didn't lose. Somebody broke in. Well, they didn't break it from my car. Mm -hmm. I left my fucking QB, door, my car on lock, um, and somebody went in. Wanted to cover another topic extreme of somebody, another topic that you wanted to get into, cover some other things. What was that? Wait, Smooth Life, um, are you talking to me? Yeah, I was talking to you because I guess I don't know where everybody else went. I think they did busy, but I was saying, uh, you know, you, you talked. Yeah, well, looks for L was supposed to come through. Um, hold on, the smooth life just dropped off. I don't know, maybe his connection. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah, the homie looks for L was supposed to come through. We we're gonna go over some things, but I don't know. I guess he's busy. He got a date or something, but. We can talk about whatever this open panel right now. I was going to bring up some stuff about Smash TV, but I can save it for another stream. No big deal. But HB, yeah. you, you were rapping, so go ahead and continue. Yeah, like I was saying, but I had somebody somebody went in my car and shit the week before the mm -hmm. fight, and, and somebody stole my passport. I left my damn passport in the damn in the um elbow glove apartment and shit and i look i still came to tj without a fucking passport and pulled up on his ass 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, if I say something, if I say I'm going to show up on your ass, I'm showing up, ain't nothing going to goddamn stop me. Even though God probably gave me a goddamn point clue, point. hey, don't, don't goddamn take your ass down Mexico. I went over there anyway without my damn passport. Right. Which, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I know we talk behind the scenes and you want to go out there to Veracruz, which... I think I got a couple of clips, but just to let you know, and I'm not forcing you to do this, but if you fly out of Tijuana, man, if you just show a regular California ID, because I've done it several times, they'll let you get on that airplane to go to Veracruz, brother. Big facts. And once you get to Veracruz, like, you're, you're Gucci, you know? No, nah, you know what? I you know what? I'm not gonna chance it because I, I fly to Tijuana all the time when I go to when I go to Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Guadalajara, Mexico City. Uh-huh. I go to sometimes I fly to um I fly to Tijuana to go to um Columbia because it's cheaper. And well, every that's time I, every different. Time I, every time I cross the border, they always press me about having a passport. Veracruz, so, right there, by the way. Yeah, I don't want to pick sure. up. I would have thought that was Columbia as soon as you, you can. I no, Shorty's looking nice. Hold on. I got more. Whew. Oh, wow. Hey. Muy, muy fuego right there. The Morena. Ecuador, man. You know, let, let me let me say this to QB. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the U.S., I, I hate to say, depends on where you are in the U.S., and it's mm-hmm. very rare you see Mexican women that look like this in the United States. You'll see it, but it's rare. Yeah, what? it is. Come on. No, no, look. I, maybe, let me, right. let me rephrase. Come, are you maybe, in Texas? Maybe in the Midwest. Are you in Texas? In Texas, Texas you're going to see a lot of them that look like are you, that. Are you oh, in really? Texas, bro? Have, have you okay. been down here? No, no, I haven't. You, you know, and that's what I was going to say. I'm from, I'm, I'm in Chicago. Oh. I'm in Chicago and you don't see that. Okay, shit. so Rob, yeah, yeah, really yeah, quick. Yeah. I want to give the backstory of this girl. Hold, hold on. Pause. Let's close too. Uh, Vegas. Hold on. Hold on, bike travel. Let me just speak for like two minutes. I want to speak for two minutes and Smooth Life is back. So I literally met this girl last year, went out there to the club in Veracruz, had a good time. She was offended that I did not get her number. And so. Uh, I was so drunk, and I'm like, well, here's my Instagram, whatever. So she ended up following me on Instagram. And she was like, hey, you don't want to hang out again? But I for- you know, I was so intoxicated from the night. I just wanted to make it home safe. No problem. Made it home safe. Went back out there to Veracruz in November. Johnny Depp, one of my subs, came out there with me. We handled business. Now she lives in Oaxaca. She's like, come through. Knows I got a main. No problem. Just want to have a good time, which is lovely. Uh, now, she's... She, right. Again, the pre-selection is real in Mexico. She's a morena. You know what I mean? My girl is a mestiza. And to be honest, body's great. Face is okay. But she speaks broken English. She ain't trying to hit hit your boy like, oh, I want to go back to the States. Parents got money. Not a single mother. Dad owns an energy company. So when these people want to say that women in Mexico are poor, nah, papers. Well, Living good. Yeah, why she, would, she, yeah sorry. Mm-hmm. Why would they come to the U.S. looking like this and having that background? You got to understand. Once mm-hmm. people across the border to lower class, let's right. not even beat around the bush. The ones that are middle class or above, they live a good lifestyle. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, they probably live a better lifestyle than most Americans, unless Americans are. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, Rod, with a D, brother. So, so, okay. so, so I, I would, uh, I would say <laughs> you have to be clear what you're dealing with. Most people think. There's a social class system that right. exists in Latin America. There's no reason for them to leave if they already have a good lifestyle. That's a key exactly. point right there. Social classes. Social, social classes. Class, that, that's right it. When I well, let me yes, uh, clarify something I said earlier, you don't see women like her. It, it, I'm telling you, in Chicago, in the Midwest, 
It's cold seven months out of the year. So you're spending seven months indoors. All they do is eat. Yeah, let's Right now, it's 50 degrees outside Fahrenheit. You think somebody's going to be hanging out outside? You guys probably have 70, 80 degree Fahrenheit weather. They, you're you're going to eat less. You're going to be in better shape unless you go to a gym and you're, you have that willpower in the Midwest. You're not going to see women like this. This is not very common. A lot of times, right. the front will match the back. They'll have a big stomach. You know what I'm saying? It's not very right. attractive. I don't find that attractive at all. Hey, hey, hey Ron, I also used to, uh, I also feel the same way because I'm also from the Midwest. And the ones I see over here, you know, they're not all that until I went to Nevada and the West Coast. Now they got some fine ones out there. Then when you go to really into Mexico, you start seeing the fine ones, like the ones that look like Colombians. And uh, uh, QB can attest to this. Like there's ones that look literally, they, they got that Colombian look to them. Right. And they look so fine, you know. It's just that the ones that you know in the what's the Colombian look, but travel. What is it? Yeah. What's the Colombian look? Uh, that yeah. Moreno look you talk you were talking about, you know. No, well, Colombians have Morenos and they have Mestizos, but I will admit the Morenos in Colombia look way better than the Morenos in Mexico, but the Mestizos. I got to give it to Mexico by far. By far. It's it's not even a a, a comparison. Because the yeah. Mestizas in Mexico, they got like Armenian blood. They got Asian blood. And they also got uh, like, you know, Spanish Middle Eastern blood. And Colombia is like that real white Spanish. Whereas Mexico... They're a little bit more exotic. So you'll see white Mexican girls, but with exotic features like green eyes and blonde hair or dirty blonde hair, etc. Red hair? Yeah. You, you mean like the Selma Hayek look? Is that what you mean? Something like that? Selma Hayek? Yeah, definitely. Mm hmm. She's mixed oh. with Lebanese and Mexican. Like, I, I think right. I, There's a lot of Lebanese in Mexico. A lot. Yeah. yeah Mexico was slept on, man. I had a, I had a nice joint from Bar Veracruz, too. Because uh, that's, that's why when QB, when you mention Veracruz, I'm like, I got to get down there because you reminded me of the girl I used to date. She, she had a 10 year uh, visa. So, like, she was working at the port um, down in um, Tijuana. So I used to go, you know, so I used to scoop her up and drive her, drive her across, you know what I'm saying, bring her to, back to my career. She was like, she had some height on. She was like five, seven, thick, you know what I'm saying? Long, to my long black hair and shit, you know what I'm saying? Real cute. She's oh, from yeah. Veracruz and shit. So and what's what what's what is Mestizas and, and Milano's? I don't know what that what, what, what is that? Oh, okay. So Mestizas are the the ones that's uh they got the uh the Spanish blood and they got the uh the native uh uh, Indian, indigenous blood. Indian, indigenous so Indian. Mix. So sometimes it varies. Sometimes, like you'll see, like Mexicans with like seventy percent uh, Spaniard blood, and you guys you see thirty percent, you know, indigenous blood, but, but they look more white. So it really, you know, it fluctuates. You, you know, sometimes you Taino, you know, Taino Indians. Yeah, sometimes it fluctuates. Now in Peru, like when you play go to places like Peru, you're gonna see a lot of that indigenous blood. You know, mm -hmm. so you can see the, the people are shorter. Uh, they, they look very, very indigenous. Darker. Bolivia as well, right? Bolivia as well. What, what is what is Milano? <laughs> Milano is Milano, yeah. man. He lost that. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you, you know what I mean. What, the other term y'all talked about. Uh, oh, oh, oh <laughs> mulatto. It's mulatto with a two T's. It's it's uh yeah. it's half uh, African. And then half something else. It's either half African, half Spaniard, or I half. I thought African, mulatto was white, white and black, but I white, white and black, correct? Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's that's all it is. I was about to say mestizo, but it actually or uh, indigenous, but he's right. It's half black, half white. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a mulatto, but it, but it's common in certain places. But let, let's not even pretend it, it's very. It can be common. several different things. It's half of whatever and half of another. It's right. <laughs> Uh, right, okay. correct. But but I that, think that the mestizo yeah. is like half indigenous with what that whatever the other half is, or okay, it, it's okay. that mixture. So there's like that gray area when you when you say mestizo for sure it's native, 
Indigenous now, Indian. Does, does Brazil have mestizos? Because, man, them women are beautiful. They have like this like ethnic look that you don't see in the States. Right. You know, is, that, is that what you guys are talking about? Like that Brazil has everything. They got everything. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you guys All I can about? say is we, we as a people, go. the black and brown people, but we as a people, the black and brown people, we mix up so well. I swear to God, right. they make and, good right. damn looking kids. Hey, right, and I'll say this: they okay. make that well to us. <laughs> That's what I'll say. We're the, you know, bro, bro, they, I, I don't know if they're very. Either way, tall. it all gets blended up real nice up in there. <laughs> so th- this this will be this will be mestizo, right? It's this like, is a, a good a good example of mestizo, and this is Kulakan Sinaloa. Oh my God, yo, Sinaloa got the baddie, bro. Right from El Chapo, like right, you, you, right. Is that mestizo? I think that's more. Uh, she's more Spanish, like more. <laughs> she is more Spanish now. Now this this will be more Morena, which is southern Mexico. Okay, right. But you see, she's short. That's another term. Right. So she's okay. this girl's Morena too. Right here, same thing. Okay, so Alcapulco, Morena. Mexico. She looks right. Asian. Okay, she's Morena. Yeah, she looks okay, Asian. Okay, and then the other one. Okay, I, so now, this is this right. is what's this is what's considered uh, indigenous Indian. Like you could see the actual right. the native uh, indigenous mm-hmm. Indian. In Spanish, she they call more, them. She looks more she, she looked look white to me, man. She look like a, no, 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 no. That's she, because of the blonde hair. hair. Look at the brown hair it's, on the other it's, side. It's, 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 uh, I mean, right. The I mean, it's not it's not natural blonde, but you you can tell. See, see, he look more indigenous. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll right. you'll find that in Colombia. There's a stronger cheekbone. Stronger cheekbones. If, if you ever go to Colombia, things like that. The, the indigenous are in a, in a part of Colombia called Santander. S A N. Uh-huh. That's where you'll find the the purebred, hundred percent Indian in Colombia. Okay. Now, okay. That, yeah, that's because when I was looking at her, she looks. You could see the indigenous. She's very Asian looking. Right. 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 Yeah. That's Absolutely. Saying, she literally Morena looks like a, 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 I love a, a, a. She literally, hey, I'm gonna keep it a G, man. She literally looks like a Thai chick. Right. Right. She, she is Miss uh, Guerrero, which is in Acapulco in 2002. You know what, Kibi? I actually met this uh, Argentinian uh, chick in uh, Cancun. Mm-hmm. Literally, this chick looks straight up Asian. And the first thing I asked her, uh, mm-hmm. was like, are you are you Asian? She was like, no, 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 I'm from Argentina. I'm Argentinian. So, so, they, so some of those natives, they do have that Asian look. And there's a theory that, uh, like s- many of them crossed over from China, uh, from right. Asia yes. over to the yes. bridge of uh, Alaska, mm-hmm. and they yes. walked all the way down to South America. So, yeah, that's, that, yeah. that's uh, yeah. well, you do know that there's a I forget the name of the book, but. And this might be controversial, but it's a book out there. And it's basically like, and it's and people say it's antiquated. Take it for what you will. But basically, in, in this book, it explains, I forget the doctor's name, but basically there's only th- really three races in the world, right? Not ethnicities, not nationalities, but races. And that would be the Negroid, the Mongoloid, and the Caucasoid. It was basically black, white, and Asian. That's what only, and everything right. else like derives from that. So you'll say like, like, though, like, if you really want to be technical from a racial standpoint, like, Yes, I've heard about. I, I did my research on that. If you're going from 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 that standpoint, the Asians migrate over from and and cross the cross the um, the North America, yeah. and then somehow I guess ended up somewhere that those regions. So really, Mexicans are really nothing but really Asians and, and um, Caucasians, and we mixed with the Spaniards. If you're ever being like uh, ten, being keeping it a buck, you know. Uh, I, yeah, I, I just get, I get confused when you guys use terms like uh, morenas and 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 mulattoes and all this shit, shit mestizos, because that's because all I know was black, white, Asian. And, you know, so, you know, but is it is it is it Mexico most? I, I think I read it's eighty five percent. They're they're uh, Inca, uh, Aztecs. Uh, sorry, not Inca. No, no, they're they're mainly Spaniards. Really? Mainly, like, why, yes. Why, so, why, like, why, prime why, example, I'm gonna show you this other girl. She's from Chihuahua, and and this is like, this is the typical look of a decent looking girl in Mexico. So they're they're. 
<laughs> yeah, very, very fair skin, but you'll see like the exotic eyes, but a lot of European features, you know? So, so QB, if you show me this chick, I would instantly think, okay, she's uh, Hispanic. But you can tell it, there's a big difference. I mean, not big difference, but difference between the Spanish, Spanish from Spain and, and, and the average Latina from Latin. Like, you, you can tell. Mm -hmm. Spanier, they look more European. Like, they have right. that German. Very, very Eurocentric. So, everything north of Mexico City is what you just saw right there. And then south of Mexico City will be more the Marina type, which is this girl right here. So, so those are guys, let, me, let me ask this, uh, QB. So, so mm -hmm. they, there's in Mexico, I've always understood from what I know, what I've read, what I've talked to people that are Mexican in the U.S., there's only two type of people in Mexico. I mean, the, the majority, not two type, but the mm -hmm. majority are either Mestizo or they call them Amerindian. Indian. Mm -hmm. Now I, I I look up the terms what they mean, but those are the two groups I've always been told are the majority in Mexico. You do have the Spaniards, you do have those that are mixed with Spaniard. I don't know if the American Mara Indian means Indian and Spaniard, but uh, Spanish mixed. Yeah. But then mestizo. There's a chart. There's a chart you can you can. It's an easy Google search, and they'll tell you every breakdown of every ethnic group. That's broke. That's in that's in Mexico, and they'll and they'll tell you like it's a uh, caste like system of, of the races. They, they'll you, yeah. yeah, they'll tell you as far as like celebrities, like what it's like. Cause that's how that's how you kind of see the gauge on the looks and the features, and you, you'll see what 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 uh, celebrity it is, and they'll tell you what they mix with in Mexico, like celebrities from Mexico, and they, and they got like a right. whole little chart, and shit. so you can see the breakdown of that shit. Cause like like in, like in Guadalajara, Guadalajara was heavily. Um, um, she's from Guadalajara, by the way. German, Guadalajara. Yeah, yeah the, the, like the chick on my YouTube channel, the Guad, the chick that's from like Guadalajara and shit. Like she's like that too. She's like real tall. She real thick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She's stacked like a mug. And like when I was down there, man, oh my god, you see nothing but fine ass like Mexican chicks everywhere. Mm -hmm. They like they like you know they sl like Mexico slept on people. A lot of people talking about Colombia, Colombia. That's like, what I see if you all the time. Go, I'll be back in QB up all day. Mm -hmm. yeah. She looks your yeah. thank you, Ronan. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I had a great time in Mexico, man. Like, let, let me this is you. Monterrey right here. Monterrey. Uh, let, 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 let me tell you this, uh, guys. I, I went to Mexico mid July, had a time in my life, came back two weeks later. Repeat the same cycle. I was like, yo, I had fun. I got to repeat this. Mexico is really underrated, man. But you know what scares Columbia. me from Mexico, man? You know man, the cartels, man. What? It's not even like that, that, brother. Actually, uh, yeah, Mexico is actually I'm safer. Saying, I don't know. Mexico is actually safer for tourists than Colombia is. Mm -hmm. We're talking about for tourists. As long as you're not messing with, you know, like, you know, you're not getting into those. Uh, yeah, bro, stay in your lane. Don't be messing around with the cartel and whatever they do in their business, and they'll leave you the fuck alone. This that's it's that simple. You you know, Mexico is closer than Colombia. I mean, I don't think they have direct flights from the Midwest to Colombia, anywhere in Colombia. You have to connect in Florida, or I think it's Texas. No, 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 no. So, Rod, you said you're like in the Chicago area. I am. I'm, I'm like 20 miles out of. Chicago. You you can get a direct flight from Chicago Airport to Guadalajara, bro. Oh, yeah. No, no. That I know. Like, so anywhere in Mexico, like Mexico City, Guadalajara, it's a four hour flight and it's it's half the cost of it is to, than it is to go to Colombia. It would mm -hmm. only make sense. Now, I went to Mexico City for the first time. I've been to Cancun, but that's not the same. You guys know that. Right. What a tourist destination. Um, but I went to Mexico City. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you're into culture, but Mexico has 110 oh, yeah. museums. And it's mm -hmm. It's got one of the top 10 museums on the planet. If you like culture and history and, and art and all that, mm -hmm. I just like culture and history. So I went right. to Mexico and I did this tour of the, and at, the at all these big top-notch museums. I couldn't believe it. It was probably better than America it, to some degree. Some of their museums. I couldn't yeah, believe it. Yeah, they got some beautiful um, museums. Uh, I was there. Uh, I was there last year. Uh, but the thing is, man, I'm glad 
that a lot of passport bros don't go to Mexico. The thing is, Mexico doesn't have like a huge tricking scene like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like places like Cartagena and stuff like that. Cause actually in Mexico you really got to put in the work. Cause I tried to get some other dudes to like, hey, let's go to Mexico. They'd be like, eh. I'm like, man, man, some baddies in fucking Mexico. No. They protect their daughters. They don't play that bullshit down there. You gotta yeah. put some yep. time in and be in that area before you can actually get with those chicks. You know what's interesting? Mm-hmm. Well, Mexico has got a larger population than Colombia. Colombia has 50 million people. Mexico has 350 million people. You would think that people. they would have Bigger more of a, you know, they, they would literally uh, do what they're doing in Colombia. But Colombia doesn't have as strong of an economy as Mexico. Mexico is part of North, the, the NAFTA agreement. They're, they got factories and companies going down there and on and on and on. It's It's incredible. Like, you're right about sleeping on Mexico, but it's because a lot of people are ignorant to it. But the close proximity and the cheaper flights than it is to go to. For me to go to Mexico, I'd probably pay 30% less than I would to go to Colombia. Now, I don't know. Yeah. This is Mexico City in the Roma district. This literally feels like I've never been to Europe, but it, it's on a different vibe for sure. Yeah, Mexico does have like a lot of the places they have like a lot of um a lot of colonial um infrastructure as far as like how mm-hmm. they how everything is designed. So it, it looks mm-hmm. very like European esque, you know what I'm saying? You, you guys gotta remember America is very new compared to a lot of these countries and these cultures. You got land down in Mexico that's been owned by certain families forever. Longer than probably America's been around, that land's been passed down from generation to generation. Right. So and there's a, a deep mystique and pride in their names and how they carry themselves. And that's where facts. classism starts to start. But, that's but where the know, classism when, starts. When you come across Mexican Americans, a lot of them don't really touch on Mexico a lot. They don't tell you, look, we got museums. Hey, we've got this, we've got that, and everything else. I, I, I've had Mexican friends all my life. And I got to tell you, not one have told me, hey, man, we got the top museums in the world. I'd have figured that out on my own when I said, let me go check out Mexico <laughs> City. Or, or, you know, it's not that I go to places for museums, but let's be honest, guys. So you guys, we go we go to some of these places. We're like, you know what? Like, I'll give you an example. You go to Medellin, the first thing that comes to mind, I hate to say this, Pablo Escobar. Right? That's the first thing you're probably thinking. You're thinking, let me right. check out a museum that has to do with Pablo Escobar. Let me see where he's at and so, so you just, it's that curiosity. It's not that you, it's like coming to Chicago. <laughs> Chicago has that Al Capone uh, reputation, right? there, That history of Al Capone. So a lot of people are going to come. They're going to say, hey, you know what? Can I go on a tour? Let me find out. And that's not even like a big deal, but that's what people, they don't come, they come for different reasons. But uh, right. I'll leave it at that. I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. No, no. I say QB history flex, man. I said being a history class right now. Right. Now, this is uh, the major park out there in Mexico, Mexico City, particularly. Uh, I forgot the name of this park, but it's it's almost as big as Central Park in New York. Do, do, and this is in Mexico. What type of class of people? I'm getting to, I guess, in their middle class and above. Like, you, you know, you could see mm-hmm. they've got that culture you know and- right right and to be honest like mexico so like the girl the mestiza that i shown before she's already been to the states on a tourist visa so like the upper middle class mexicans they already have visas and you'll meet those girls in chihuahua guadalajara mexico city uh, even Culiacan, Mazalan, Morelos, uh, Cuernavaca. Yeah, you know and what? It's, be, yeah, sorry, go mm-hmm. ahead. And, and it's like, hey, we know about American culture, but we love Mexico a lot more. We, we got just as many nice beaches. The food is great. We have parks here. We have a lot of national landmarks. It's no problem. But go ahead. You, you know, Mexico, uh, not to take the topic in a different direction, but you know, Mexico, I think after a month during the pandemic, they reopened. I don't know if you mm-hmm. know. 
It was the first place on the it's planet. It's where I was going all the time during the pandemic. It's you remember the that? It, they were the first ones on the, they were the first ones to reopen after 30 days. I think in the U.S. we were shut down for what six months? Was it three months or six months? Uh, it was. It was and, more. Six and months, masks right. were not mandatory in a lot of places. Yeah, man. I right. also went there right after you know they opened thirty days later, and when I went there, it was no mask. People were having. Uh, uh, yep. masks. So that's why I went. I went there a couple of times. You know. So, yeah, I must the, have been there treat- at least six times in Cancun over the two years. How they treat the brothers out there. Okay. They treat the brothers nice, bro. I mean, it's all about um, how you yourself, man. It's, it's if, mm-hmm. if, if go you ahead, go there, like you know, respecting yourself, respecting others, then people are gonna treat you, you know, like a regular human being. But if you go in there, uh, you know, bring that pookie lifestyle. Yeah. Then, you know, <laughs> don't go down there loud and obnoxious, right. showboating yeah. and boasting. With your chest all out because they'll definitely put your chest back in your chest for real. Or, or throwing dollar bills in the air, you know. What I mean? Yes. Yeah. You, you said you, you said nice, like you got something to say, or oh, oh, like you. Well, like you so here here's the thing. I think in Mexico you got to have a little bit more patience compared to other countries because the women they're like, look, we love American culture, we do love black men, but. Not every girl is going to be like running to you because you're a black American compared to like Cancun. I mean, uh, not Cancun, but Colombia or DR. So they're not desperate, right? Exactly. Yeah. But you, and so it's not like that. So they're not desperate like that. But it's not like they're going to just like give it to you off rip though. But you don't get it right. You got to understand the southern border of America. The migrants that are coming up to the southern border are not coming from Mexico. Right. They're coming through Correct. Mexico, from Guadalajara mm-hmm. and all these, uh, from from Honduras and other places like that. Mexicans also, love their country. Yeah, they don't need to go anywhere. Their economy is straight. They're producing well. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. they're making money and and all things. So they don't need to run to the border. You exactly. Because jumping across the damn gate from Tijuana to come here. Well, well, why would somebody, for example, a Mexican, leave a nice climate, let's say, to come to the Midwest in Chicago where the climate's horrible? That's my point. They wouldn't. They wouldn't, right? I mean, it's just there's it's logic. Don't come if they have to work because there's a lot of employment in Illinois. Right. Is really now, good. When you're talking about Honduras and other countries that are having problems with dictatorships and, and guerrilla warfare, right. those are the guys that are running through Mexico to try to get to America. Right. And then, and then, yeah, and then everybody the keeps calling them Mexican and shit, which is right. cool. And it's not the Mexicans that are doing that; it's other countries. You, you know, when I booked a flight to uh, to Mexico City, where was I going? I recently I, I seen a, a, an Aero Mexico flight, or there was another airline. I don't remember. It's a Mexican airline from Chicago directly to Mexico. It was ninety nine percent. You can tell ninety nine percent of them probably were originally from Mexico. I don't know if they were living in Chicago or, like you said, they got a, a visa. But maybe they got a visa. They're coming to visit family in Chicago. Chicago or Illinois has the largest number of Mexicans outside of California and Texas. Really? Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Well, they will cross the border to work, especially in the financial business arena. They will cross the border to work in the financial district, and they will fly their asses home on the weekends. Right. Yep, just like Ron, and, else Ron is correct on that. It's a country. In yeah, world. I mean, there are some one state living. to make a, a decent amount of money. They they should be drinking a lot. They call me Bob, Ron. They work in uh, San Diego. My you bad. Know. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> just Rob, think what it is. But anyways, go ahead. But yeah, man. I mean, if like Mexican women, like they don't want your money, man. Like so, yeah. just Buck is right. They're not desperate. You know, when you say when you say when you say they don't want your money, you mean what do you mean, bro? You say like I'm, I'm saying marry. that you got to bring something else to the table, right? Yeah, you because know, okay. some of them women they, they already have they, they're coming. Mexico, a lot of people don't realize Mexico is actually closer to first world country. It's second world, but it's right. not like a third world country where like Venezuela, Colombia, where you have a large percentage of poverty out there. Right, mm-hmm. Mexico right. is up, up and coming country. You know, and I've been there many times, and and I saw how developed, you know, it really is. You know, 
Yes. Go go ahead, Rod. Go ahead, Rod. Going back to what the QB said earlier, you know, QB, um, it's not a bad thing that Mex they're sleeping on Mexico. Uh, uh, all you see are these videos on Colombia or Dominican Republic. How many people want to go to Mexico? Well, let for them keep going there. Right. Keep it a and, secret. And, and, let <laughs> them keep going there. We don't need to let them know. We've right. tried. Me and QB have been on different podcasts together trying to let them know about Mexico. They don't want to believe right. it. That's fine. Man, I mean, for, for one, let me, let me just say this really quick, Rod. I love the food in Mexico. Like, the food is damn near, it's, it's pretty much better than USA food. Like, if you want a good steak, it's less processed. And I don't eat red meat anymore. But Monterey is, like, better steakhouses in Monterey compared to Houston by far. Fuck the red meat. You got a whole bunch of shellfish coming right out the Yes. Ocean, Exactly. You yeah. you got hella fish. You got marlin out there, like in Puerto Penasco. You got some white fish in uh, yeah. Mazalan. Yeah. Freaking delicious. And Mazalan is the shrimp capital of the world. So shrimp tacos. If if you if you order a shrimp taco anywhere in the states, they give you like three or four shrimp and that many many. Mini pea sized shrimp in Mexico, they pal the shit in. The shrimp is falling out the taco as you're eating it. Yeah, literally, not, they're not chancy about putting portions on a, on a plate, right? They're not greedy like that. And I, and I fucking laugh. I tell the waiter, I'm like, damn, your chef, <laughs> he just puts it all in there. And he's like, yeah, no problem, man. We, we don't care. And so that. And I really appreciate the liquor. The liquor, the tequila is way better than Colombian liquor, by far. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, the food. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, wait, yeah, I'm. Go, go, ahead. Go, go ahead, smooth life. Uh, I was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm learning today. The food in uh, Colombia, man. Man, so I, I was big, big contracts. Colombian yeah. food. Mm -hmm. Colombian food, man. They need to start adding seasoning, salt. He said they don't see some shit. <laughs> Ronnie, have you ever been to Columbia, man? Have you ever tasted Columbia? <laughs> no, mean, I've it's never it's been to Columbia, you know, unfortunately. It's, but it's, uh, it's, I, it's, like it's, I said, I, Mexico is my second home. So, it's, it's, you know, I go there healthy. more times than not. Colombian food is healthy, but it doesn't have spices, like, you know, salt and all that. That's why I prefer, like, Mexican mm. food, man, is just phenomenal, man. And, and, there, I'm, and I'm there's glad. healthy Mexican food, too. By yeah, the way, I'm, I'm I'm just gotta be part of this space, man. Um, you know, I got I know certain brothers are certain travel. They go to certain countries and they swear by it. You know, um, it's right. just good to, good to know that you know, hey, Hot you know, chocolate you get for breakfast, panel, Marco. When you when you get on a panel and you guys, you know, people have their secret jams and shit like that. You know, because there's I've certain jam. Well, I want to start traveling more, which I will. But um, I, there's certain jams that I think of are jams that I've heard. That, brothers talk about but i don't want i don't want to talk about it too much because it's a jam right it's like you want exactly to smooth too many <laughs> secrets too many people talking about it you you got to keep it down low you know what i'm saying you, you know what they uh i think it was um i don't remember his name off the top of my head but today in medellin they caught three women that scoped two german tourists now i'm going to tell you my oh. opinion uh, go ahead go ahead rod of Colombia, certain parts. Of, if you go to Medellin, you go to Cartagena. That's where they get a majority of the tourists. Probably a good ninety percent. Probably up like it's a pretty good percentage. So you're talking about millions of people going to Medellin and Cartagena. There's you got to understand the economic situation in Colombia right now because of the pandemic. There's like if you look at the amount of adults that are not working, especially working class with no skills, no education, it's a lot of people. So they're gonna use. They're going to bait these tourists because what are tourists doing in a good time, right? They're going to bait them with women. Even if these women are not so attractive, they're still going to bait them somehow. And in the process of doing so, a lot of people are getting drugged. And and some of them are getting damaged, brain damage and dying. That's exactly what's happening. And if you look at the numbers, real Ronan, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I'll tell you what I do. I just avoid Medellin altogether. Mm -hmm. But you got a lot of dudes that are hard headed and think they're not the ones. They're gonna get skipped over, yep. and it's not gonna happen to them. And Man, you know, I, you know sometimes I you can't correct an idiot. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I hate Cartina, man. Like out of all the like the countries I've been to, when it comes to like you know what I'm saying beach cities, mm-hmm. Colombia they beg the most. They ultimately about the harassing and the begging is done. Stop! It just ruins your whole experience. Last HP. time I was out there, my home, I had a home. What's up? Both of us being Marines, we traveled around the world. What is the typical thing when we hit a port? How do we travel? Like buddy system. It's usually two to oh, three guys. Like, I'm like, I'm like, like they don't I, care where we are in the world. We'll go out in town, but we always have a system. All these dudes are running around individually with no care in the world, don't know how to have backup. And you're talking about people that are trained to kill. And we still go two or three deep. Well, hold so on. think about that, fellas. I'm gonna right. give you I'm gonna give you a little pushback. I travel solo. I always been traveling solo, so you know what I'm saying? Even when uh, you're in the core. No, nah, no, nah, I'm talking about like um No, I'm talking about when you're in the core. Well shit, in the core, when I was traveling, I was still riding solo. Right. Really? Uh like I'm talking about I'm talking about in my free time. That's what I'm talking about. Free time. Well, you, you know what? You know, I, hold on, hold on. Let, 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 me, let me back up. So when I first came in, when I was young, PFC, Lance Corporal, yada yada. Yeah, I mean, we, we was kind of like on the buddy system. But a lot of times, I rolled right. solo. I rolled yeah. solo because, like, probably, you probably once you got your experience up, yeah, absolutely. Once you get your experience up, of course. You're probably so, rolling solo because you ain't got friends. You probably have the flexibility and the finance, financial ability to go oh. solo. Yeah. You know, your friends are probably busy. They can't afford it, or they probably can, but they got a family. There's a reason why you go solo. Why, why do you go solo? I'm guessing that's the reason. That's why. the reason. That's exactly. That's, you hit it right on the hill. I mean, you hit it right on the hill. Because um, a lot of dudes, they don't want to travel. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot, a lot mm-hmm. of dudes don't have passports. Look, my first time traveling with somebody was 2021. 20, it was a cat I met, met out here in um, California because every time I meet somebody, I try to put them on the uh, traveling scene or, you know what I'm saying, I, be, I used to beg my friends back home, like, hey, let's go somewhere, let's go somewhere. And nobody will never go anywhere, but I'm not going to let somebody stop me from out there doing anything. So oh, absolutely I, not. I, look, I always, I always got them being traveling solo. And that was my first time out of fucking t- over 20 years, man, traveling internationally. I'm talking about solo. That was my first time traveling with somebody like um in twenty twenty one and we went to uh, Columbia, we went down to Cartagena. Oh, if I don't know how you're gonna move, you're not traveling with me, period. I can go by myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So I gotta know how you move. And usually like I uh, QB knows I'm I'm one of the dudes sitting on this panel. I take sand to the beach everywhere I go. I used to take and, the and they're hating on you. That that that's okay. the crazy part. It's so, like look. You know, brother got I, resources. He, he have, he's a vet. Like, why are you, you hating know, on this guy? So For what? I take sand to the beach. I like living through their eyes. You get what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if if I don't know how she's gonna move, and I know she's one of those, she could be a loud mouth type of chick, and, and walk her mouth into some trouble. She ain't going. You know, mm-hmm. not that I even associate with those type of women. You know, so. Yes. Obviously, if I, sh- I travel by myself, it- it's going to be because I know how to move. But some of these beginners are traveling by themselves and they don't even know how to move in a country. But nor I'd, do I'd, they I'd, seek advice, nor do they I'd seek been, advice. I'd have been in some situations where, you know what I'm saying, I had to kind of like finagle a way out, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I used to be in a DR, I used to have a rental car, I used to drive around the whole entire island. Right. And I used to be in the hoods, I used to be everywhere, you know what I'm saying? I almost got robbed one time. <laughs> but, yeah. Be but careful doing is, that. Be but careful thing doing is, that shit. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, sometimes like I ain't trying to be arrogant, but sometimes people know who soft targets are and who are not soft targets. Because you know, what I'm saying the guys that try to rob me, they know I wasn't with the shit. Because I don't play that shit, and they kind they kind of backed off. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So That's like, true. Then, I, then like I like they got robbed at the airport. The, the damn the, the car rental place tried to rob me and shit. I, I ended up flipping the whole goddamn office. Cause they tried to hold my passport and my flight was about to leave like in an hour and they was trying to scam me for some more money. And I was like, no nah, dog, I'm not playing that shit. So I had to turn up on, 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 on this. I ain't got time right. for the bullshit. I got to go. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm not, I'm not recommending that shit to everybody else. I'm telling that right now. Cause it's a lot of people carry yourself. A lot of people, a lot of people that but, don't know, don't carry themselves that way. But there is a way that you can carry yourself where you immediately put out an aura that people don't want to fuck with you. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't, know. you don't it. I think you. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like being trying to be. I don't like being scammed and shit. People trying to take advantage of me. I'm not gonna let it happen. 
you know but, what uh, but usually usually when I travel I move low key anyway you know what I'm saying right. but it right. Right. Don't, where don't, I don't, don't. you know what I was gonna say is what Ronan said right. like, so some guys like to roll solo for a reason I, I'll tell you why because I've been at 37 countries listen what, one of the reasons you roll solo is because your wingman can get you hurt he Boom. can your wingman can get you hurt so so I'll tell you I'll give you an example I had a friend he was a, a brother from uh Texas where was he from? I forgot. Houston, Texas. He was new to Colombia. So I speak Spanish. I learned it in the country. And I'm showing this guy. He says to me, he's he's living in Medellin. He says to me, he goes, Rod, let's 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 go to let's go let's go city hopping, like from city to city, but let's take the bus. I don't know if you guys experienced that in Colombia. It's safe. You just gotta go during the day, and there's only certain cities you can do it and you can only go to. So we started going bus hopping and we went to a city called Pereira. And, and then we, we went there. The problem with this guy is he was also an army veteran. And then he had PTSD. I, I don't have, I'm a, I'm a veteran myself, Air Force. I don't have a problem with PTSD, but here's the problem. The, the guy, he's got to, you got to manage that because what he did was his, his anxiousness almost got us into a fight mm -hmm. with some Colombians. And then I had to tell him, hey, man, we got to step out because, uh, you know, we don't know. these. So, so you you know, you got to be – my point is you got to know who you're rolling with. And even if they are veterans, it's not a big deal. You just got to manage it a certain way. In other words, you don't go hanging out 12, 14 hours a day with a guy that's got PTSD. Maybe you shorten it to two, three hours a day. <laughs> Hold up now. You got two guys. You got two guys on the panel. Both of us have PTSD. So, you know, and we both know how to move. We My both bad. know how to move in country. So, you know, you're, you're right about that. Some guys don't know how to handle or manage their 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 issues. Right, so, yeah, right. I, can't, look, I can't manage my shit, but I don't pick fights with people. Like when I was in Thailand just exactly. past April and shit, man, I, I had a damn motorbike doing Sokran. This damn Thai dude, it's 10 30 at night. You know what I'm saying? This dude hit me, slapped in my face with a bucket of water, and, and I laid down my motorbike. I ended up crashing, laying on the motorbike, and I ended up smacking the shit out of his ass. I just couldn't control myself because I'm like, bro, it's 10 30 at night. You know what I'm saying? And like, what, what, what if a, a car just like just happening? A car could have been coming on the opposite side because my bike slid into the other lane. You know what I'm saying? That shit could have been real bad for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people go out there like, man, you can't go out there fuck on top. People like, hey, I wasn't trying to hear that shit. I'm like, bro. Like you almost fucking killed me, and I ended up smacking the shit out of it. People had from the damn bar, from the damn the tiger bar, had to run down and fucking hold me back and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what? You you could be in the right HB, and I'm not saying you're you're not in the right. But here's the problem: if you got ten Thai guys surrounding you, you're the only brother. What are you gonna do, man? Take on I had ten. ten Thai people, goddamn, surrounding me, and they were scared as fuck. <laughs> no, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's not the case, but but I, I, I'm going to tell you, 100 Chinese men. And I, I've been in China recently, and these guys weigh 110 pounds. But if you get 10 of them, or you get, you know, they they, they work in packs. Is what I'm trying to say. And then when they I see, see what you're saying, they, I see exactly yeah. what you're saying. But shit, I didn't got down. Work. Three people asked for like four size American size of man before in the U.S. in the club. Right. And motherfuckers went to call the police on me. I'm like, what kind of punk ass shit is that? Three of y'all trying to jump me, and I whooped all y'all asses. I went to call the police on me. Yeah. Look, I, I'm not a small dude. I'm not saying I'm Billy Badass, but I'm saying, though, like, you fucking goddamn try me, it's going to be bad. I don't give a damn how many y'all is. All y'all right. better, better have a gun. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. You know your ability. Right. You know your ability as a martial artist. And 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 people that know how to fight, there's a certain way you carry yourself, where most people can pick up on the fact that you're not a pushover. Right. If you carry yourself that way, you don't have to speak loudly. You don't have to do shit. It's the way you carry yourself. So people run up on you, but then they assess you and say, "Oh fuck, I'm not going to fuck with that dude." Because I'm like, and that's with him, HB. Probably you yourself because you're also trained in martial arts. You're cool, calm, and collective, but you know how to carry yourself in such a way that you're on guard. Period. Yeah, I, I had so, a couple of uh, situations in Colombia where it was life threatening. I had a uh, two guns pointed at me. I had a guy with a machete. And I, he had a machete right over me. So, so, so I've, I've had those situations, and I, I gotta tell you, what's kept me alive? It wasn't being. The last option is using your yourself. You want to use self defense as the last. You exactly. want to fight as a last. You want to defuse it. 
And the way you do it, you keep your, your calm, calm composure, say, hey, man, take it easy, and then, and then deal with it as you're dealing with it. And then if you feel threatened, then you have to do whatever you got to do. But you want to try to diffuse and at the same time be self, you know, keep the distance, or, you know, be ready to, to defend yourself. But you keep your distance and you want to diffuse first. That That's what I do. Yeah, it's like I see it, but, two guns pointed I, at the head. I never see. I never been in a situation where you know. What I'm saying? I never see. I never started. Every situation I was in, it was somebody trying to take advantage of me, and then they had to realize real quick that you couldn't do that. But I get what you're saying. You know, what I'm saying you should always be on guard and shit. But I never, I never go out of the country. I never pick fight. I never pick fights with people. You know, what I'm saying I'm very chill. You know, because when I was going out of the country, I'm on vacation. I'm trying to have a good time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to explore and fuck some bitches. You know how it is. You're, former, you're former military. Most military people are very well trained right. in handling and knowing how to be respectful to other cultures. So that's one thing. It, it's engraved in anybody that's in the military. When you travel abroad, you're very respectful of that culture. So you're not really a loud mouth unless you're just one of those arrogant guys. You know see, what I mean? See, 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 you should always just escalate the situation. Somebody needs to turn down their TV in the background, you know, just to be respectful of the stream. Somebody got it. Okay. So, All right. So they fixed it. Please, man, you should always be in your best, best behavior. Always this escalate situation. Even if if you're not in the wrong, always this escalate the situation. Let's say some some dude came up to you, and and he did you wrong. Let's say he hit hit you. Find a way to this escalate that situation. First of all, ain't nobody hitting me just randomly like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not included in that example. Okay. Like, okay, let's say you I'm hit sure him. HB isn't, and I'm sure Rod is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you a story. So, what, what can happen is like if you hit him back and you knock him out, let's say you knock him out and he, he uh, and, and you just, his, his head hit the concrete, and let's say he gets into a coma now. You're looking at mass slaughter charge. You, right. you're, you're looking at a serious charge, and now you're sitting at an overseas prison where you don't even know nobody. I, I, I so understand so you, everything you're saying, but uh, when always, when you're at that point, if he guys, puts his hands on you at the wrong time, it's going to happen. We can't be, be be playing superhero and all that because, like, you got to think about it. The cards are stacked against you. With when things go wrong, you know those police. They're gonna side with their local people more than a gringo tourist people. Always remember that. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Hey, if, if anybody listening, make sure you take Buck and Rod's advice. They give it good advice. Don't do what HB does. HB, you can do it. <laughs> hey, I'm talking about beginners, hey, HB, bro. I, I, Believe me, I'm open hey, enough to know. Yeah, I'm just like, like, like your honesty, brother. I like your honesty. You, you, you know, HB, I'll, I'll say this about HB. Listen, I, I'm not going to say I disagree with him. I gotta, I'm going to be honest with you guys. But here's the problem, though. He's by himself. You got to have back, man. You know that, HB. You're a Marine. You got to mm -hmm. at least have at least one, two people that have your back, and then you go into trouble. Mm -hmm. At least you got one, two, because by yourself, it's a tough one, man. I, I don't know. I I mean, it's like you said, it's Thailand. You could take on four people. I don't. I don't say you. I'm not saying you can't. But can you take on four people with machetes? I, I, I don't know. I know. I, I'm sure. I know how I act. I know how. Hey, I hey why you come out with a machete? I'm running. Next right, right, right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how HB moves. I know how I move. Usually, I greet the bouncers when I go in a room. Right. When I go in the club or anything like that, I'm usually greeting the bouncers. Why? Because I'm six foot two and a half. Weighing right. 275 pounds. So most of them are feeling me up anyway. Right. Like, God damn, you're a fucking solid rock. You know, so when I walk in a room, most likely I've already befriended the security. Right. So usually they already side eyeing me to make sure I'm good. You know, no matter what, even though they know I'm not going to start any problems because I've already greeted them. So usually when I walk in a club, I greet the, the, the bouncers. I agree, security. You, you know, correct me you know if I'm, I'm wrong, guys. What, 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 even if you go to another country, a lot of times when you're hanging out with your boys, it's going to be the tour spots or the bars or the clubs. That's where you're going to you're going to do your own thing. Maybe you go to eat with them, but you go to a bar, you go to you know beach, wherever you guys go with your friends. Th that's how you roll when you're rolling with your friends, and you're hoping you're not going to have any problems. But chances are, when you go to a club or a bar with a few men, they're oh, oh, drinking. 
hey, man, you know as well as I do, somebody's going to say or do something. You just increased your odds of getting in trouble. I'm not saying you should go to another country, hang out in a bar or nightclub by yourself. That's weird. But you got to have someone on your side, your buddy or, or your wingman, who understands, hey, we're going to have a good time, but we're not going to cause any problems. Listen, Rod, I think that, um, you know, if I just add my two cents in it, man, what I'll say is this. You think you're Billy really Badass and you think you can walk around with a chip on your shoulder. Trust me, I've one thing I've learned. You think you got a chip on your shoulder and you're the toughest motherfucker, there's always somebody out there who's tougher than you. Right. And somebody's ready to knock it off. So if you walk around with, hey, I'm gonna, you gotta, I'm not gonna pick and choose my battles, and and if somebody do me wrong, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a retaliate. That you know, you just ask that's a recipe for disaster at some point. Ain't nothing wrong with defending yourself as a man, and if you gotta engage in mutual combat, it is what it is. But you wanna be able to be smart and and assess the situation, and is it worth it? Ask yourself, right. is it? Worth it? That's it. That's just, that's you, I've you, you, you know what happened in Medellin when I was there at I was at a nightclub. I don't know if you guys know this nightclub in Medellin. It's called Mangles. You guys remember this Mangles? I've okay, it's, it. it's it's a popular a local there. nightclub. I, I don't, this was years ago, a long time. So I don't know what it is today. If you go back about seven years, it was it's a hot place to go for Halloween. So mm -hmm. let me tell you what happened. So there was a guy that I don't know how this happened, but he's connected. He was able to take a gun inside the nightclub. And this is a very popular nightclub. It could fit hundreds of people, probably a thousand. So there was a Colombian guy that's at, okay, the guy that had a gun stepped on another, he's a Colombian guy, connected. I don't know what he was connected with, but he had, had a gun. You, you can't take guns in these places. So he's connected. So he walks, he's, he steps on another Colombian guy's shoes. The guy that he stepped on his shoes says to him in Spanish, because this is a story that was in the paper. Says to him in Spanish, um, you know, watch yourself, excuse me, or something like that. So the guy that had a gun pulls the gun out and just blows him away, just kills him. You st he stepped on his shoes. It's just how he responded with an attitude. The guy that had a gun just killed him, just like that. And that nightclub ended up getting shut down. And then the mayor had to, you know, they had to pay fines and everything else. But it was a place where even gringos would go, foreigners would go for Halloween. Well known for Halloween, Halloween spot. And Halloween's around the corner. If you're ever in Medellin, that's the place to go to for Halloween. It's incredible. See, and I can tell you, most cartels don't want that shit to happen. Yeah. So I'm sure that guy got reprimanded severely if he didn't wind up in a desert somewhere in a hole. You get what I'm saying? Because you fuck with the tourist money, you're fucking with their money. Right. You get what I'm saying? So when that happened, I don't care how connected he was and how much cojones he had to walk around in a club just just disrespecting everybody in a club because he had a gun. But uh, hold on, but but Ronan, let me let me say this really quick. In Mexico, I will be honest, they respect their tourist dollars. Like exactly. they protect Americans for the most part. As long as you're not like doing something really stupid with the police. They're going to make sure, like, look, we can't let Americans have a bad experience. But for Colombia, it's really? unfortunately, they don't really protect Americans like Mexico does. What's right. your guys' right. thoughts? They don't have a No cap, no cap, and just John ain't said a word, man. Let's, let's get oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, no cap. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. My, my bad. Yeah, well, he just brought up. Uh, Colombia, they don't give a fuck. Like there was a story, I think it was two years ago. Some in Barranquilla, some black man opened up a business in in like the hood part of Barranquilla. He bought like a business, and he got killed in a drive-by shooting. Did you hear about that story? It was like two years ago. It was like uh, he he bought a business and a condo in like the hood. So it was like no condo. Yeah, his, his name is Timothy Reed. Oh yeah, okay. Timothy Reed. Yeah, man. Oh. Uh, Timothy Reed, man, he, he has so many red flags. He, I mean, he was trying to purchase the property off a handshake deal with no lawyer, no translator involved, no paperwork. He was trying to buy that property in the worst area of Barranquilla, the hood. Like, we, you're talking about the south side of Barranquilla. So Barranquilla is divided by uh, north and south. The north is the good side. The south is the, is the, is the bad side. So he actually went to the south side thinking that he can uh, transfer the neighborhood. Uh, so he wanted to buy that property 
just off cash, straight up cash. And I think you, you, you can't be just moving like that. I mean, RRP to the brother, he had a good, good intention, but what he did was like, that's not, that's a big no, no. Yeah. So if you're doing any kind of business or anything, just, you gotta have insiders that live there helping you out. That people do too so much dumb shit like that. But. Facts. And somebody said, uh, "Why Mexico protect their uh, tourists?" Is because tourism uh, is like what is it? More than ten percent of Mexico's G GDP. Where Colombia, it's only like less than two percent. So they don't. Colombia doesn't need no tourists. Colombia doesn't need no tourists. Ninety-eight percent of their GDP is like is like activated within other sectors you know so that's why like mexico really really that's why they're one of the few countries that opened first during the so pandemic. tell me this if that's true why are they in such an economic downturn yeah that's a good question because their salary is like what 300 some dollars a month they're desperate they're the, the their, their 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 employment is low so if they I don't mean, need outside help what what are, what is their main source of uh I export? mean I mean I mean I mean they're one of the most natural resource rich country in the world. If you're looking at land for land, Colombia is the most like biodiverse natural resource country in the world. So I don't I don't maybe it's corruption, maybe I don't know. But uh definitely definitely is uh it's, it's a lot of variables that play into it. When I, when I go to Mexico for like short trips, like the two week trips, I've gotten in the habit of getting stuck meeting the the working girls who are poor, single mothers, you know, some of them are attractive, but it's just a lot of time. And not, a lot of guys have that problem too. They go for short trips and they're not getting a chance to get in with the middle class or some of the girls. I agree with you, DeMarco. Yeah, see, I don't- DeMarco said, DeMarco said cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Cocaina. Look, now, I'm not, now, now, let me tell you about the coffee in Colombia. So the locals told me that they get the short end of the stick with the coffee. They get the worst coffee, and they ship out the best out of the best coffee to 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 the U.S. and other countries. So because the locals cannot afford, you know, the 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 high end coffee. Uh, so that's what I heard. Uh, so and, and they also import uh, export fruits, mangoes, and all that. So, right. Uh, hold on, hold on, really quick. Uh, bike travel. Shout out to I just got a cash app from Colin Traveler. I uh, appreciate it. Yo, the, the ten dollar. The the traveling colonizer, the ten dollar cash app. Thank you, thank you very much. Yo, just John, go ahead. You say your piece. You say anything? Yeah, just John. Go ahead. Yeah, um, you know what I mean. I was just sitting in the background, kind of listening to what you guys were saying. Uh, it sounds like you guys really love Mexico. Me personally, I don't think I'm ever really gonna do Mexico realistically, unless it's for something else, because there is like something important i have to do that does involve possibly going there but it's mexico wouldn't be my first pick you know because i guess i'm one of those type of dudes who i don't really want to work for it that hard because you guys make it sound like you know in mexico they don't give it up that easily you know what i mean and i'm not depends on what you part know. you go to cancun you go to like tijuana places like that yeah you're gonna get it that's not a problem. You got other people from other cultures that are in those areas. So you go to a high tourist area, yeah, you can still, you know, meet women. So don't let that stop you. But if you're going into like Mexico City and other places, then you know you should you should be uh, cognizant that it's not just going to be a rollover. Yeah, man. I, 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 my, the best thing, the best thing to do, man, just level up, man. Because if you if you go to these places, you wouldn't have a problem. Like for me in Mexico, like I never had an issue. Out of all the South American places, I think Mexico the only place that I didn't have chicks begging me for money or trying to goddamn play the sympathy sympathy card about oh my children don't have any money or like chick just sitting up in the house not doing any fucking thing. Because like places like Colombia and all those other places. Like chicks just sit up in the house, they don't do shit, they don't work, they don't do nothing. And their whole their whole their whole game is like trying to meet American dudes online 
to get to feel sorry for them to send them like a couple of dollars if they can get like 10 20 tricks sending them like even just like 20 50 dollars they don't have to do anything so like Mexico, like every chick I dealt with Mexico, they had their own like money and stuff. Like the last girl I was dealing with in Guadalajara, she had her own clothing store. She was smart as fuck. I think she went to school. She's like a chemist, but for some reason she didn't want to do that shit. So she ended up opening up a clothing store. She got her own money, crib, house. Her dad, her dad's a lawyer. Uh, I think her mom used to be a model or some shit back in the day. So actually, you know, this this kind of reminds me, QB. I've I've told you I I was when I was in Peru, I was with mostly locals because I I had a lot of good friends who had locals there and you know what i mean friends with co-workers and stuff like that and one thing i i didn't i don't think i mentioned this in your stream qb there are the amount of scams in peru is actually scary bro because i actually there's some shit i didn't even know until i started chatting with with some buddies over there that are locals and uh one of the scams i didn't actually think this was a scam until they actually told me what they do is, and I'm going to put you guys on game here. In Peru, what people tend to do is they actually buy babies from other people hour, on an hourly rate and then walk around the street begging for money for their and her and their kid. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it is actually that. true. Because trust me, I have I have good friends over there, you know, and they're actual locals. So they're in like different areas and stuff like that. I didn't just stay in, in, in you know the, the um, the San Isidro's and you know what I mean, the right. Barrancos. I I went outside of there as I told you in the stream, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't know about this stuff, bro. They, another example, is that they actually buy on an hourly rate autistic kids, and then they bring them out to these tourist areas. And then they actually show them off to people saying they need help and can you please pay for his ed to help him with his education and his medication and stuff like this is true story 100 hey, that's a good hustle that's a real good hustle <laughs> i did not know i gotta give them respect for that that's a good hustle that, that's very creative right it is scarily yeah, it is. true <laughs> oh, that's, shit. A good, well, that, that's a good hustle but let me just say this man out of all those latin american countries i've been to peru was like the least uh the like country where i got uh begged for money all the time it wasn't like bad as in places like dr where like, you go to the beach you, you get begged for something or Cartagena, you get him begged for rules. Right. I, I don't know respectfully i'll have to disagree because my experience over there was extremely scammy but you know everyone I mean, has their own experience and that's you yeah, speaking like, spanish has their own experience yes man. that's but, me speaking uh, spanish with other spanish-speaking people locals i mean i mean me i mean i mean like i said everybody experience is always going to be different but i had I had a good time out there the food is amazing peruvian food is amazing I mean, man amazing. not to discount TV, your was, experience but but when you when you are speaking a local language you're in with the locals they are disarmed with you so you see a lot more than a tour seeing the surface area. So while you could have a great experience, there's always an underbelly to every city and every experience that you may never see. And what just John is saying is that underbelly, you know, from him talking and, and, and being able to blend in with the locals with his language and everything else, he was exposed to a hell of a lot more than what we were able to see ourselves on the surface. So, yeah. So just, so yep. just John, would you say that experience ruined your your uh, situation in Peru? I don't. I wouldn't say it ruined it. I still had a lot of fun. I still recommend people to go to Peru because they have amazing seafood and and you know there's so much to see out there. But I'm not gonna lie. The the scams, the amount of scams out th out there are a little scary. I'm not gonna lie. So far with this stuff. I got a quick story to tell, but I did get scam scam on a tour going out to Machu Picchu, which is like the desert out there. So the dude was like, "Hey, give me the money, cash. Um, here's my Instagram. Here's my email. No response for the tour. I mean, it was like twenty bucks, but it still, I'm just like, man. Now it's like." 
I want to book it directly from a website versus a salesman, you know, ventador on the streets. You, you know, ventador. Like, those yeah. websites real quick. I, I would like I booked a flight when I was uh, in China and you got to be really careful with these websites. You got to double check the currency. So here's what you have to do when you book the flight on the websites, whether it's a tour or airline or hotel. You want to double check the currency, make sure it's in English, if that's the language that you read in. And then as soon as you, you get the email, you got to confirm it's the same amount you got on the website. And I'll tell you why. I booked a flight within China, within their own borders, the same state, a city about three hours away. They charge me more than booking a flight from China to the United States. So God I'm actually, damn. Yeah, I'm fighting that now. It, they charged me almost a, like if the I would have, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was literally three hours away. Shouldn't have cost me more than 300 American dollars. If that, because if you go in, within China's borders, if you go from the South of China to Shanghai, that's about 300 bucks round trip economy. And then obviously everything else, if you want business, you pay more, but three hours away and I'm paying almost a thousand dollars. So what so part of China did you go to? I was in uh, Shenzhen, South China, Shenzhen. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I had to go to another part of China, which is next to Haikou. Did you it's ever a- get to go to Ho- uh, Hong Kong? Uh, I, yeah, I was in Hong Kong as well. Yeah, it's right over the border. So I had to mm-hmm. go to Haikou. It's about three hours. It's like an hour, 10 minutes from Haikou. So altogether, it's about a three-hour flight with, with the connection. So so you, you have to be careful booking online. You got to double-check the currency. And as soon as you get the email... You got to make sure it matches up. Otherwise, I'm paying a thousand dollars. I'm fighting that now. So, as and, and soon as you get the email, if it doesn't match up, you can contest it with your credit card company right away. Say, "Hey, look, I just booked this online ten minutes ago. It doesn't match. Let's can you contest it right now?" And and the timing makes a difference. Now, what, company, what company was that? It, it was through uh, China Southern Airline. They they knew I was American, man. I, I you click um, English and American English, right? And then I I don't know how it said Australian dollars. I was trying to purchase a ticket in Chinese RMB, Chinese currency. So so it was a, almost a thousand American dollars, man. And that's a three Damn. hour. I could have taken a, a speed train to that city. It wouldn't have cost me more than fifty dollars round trip. I'm paying a. That's on a speed train. Same amount of time, but I couldn't find a plane, uh, an actual train ticket, so I booked a flight, and so now I'm fighting it. Who wants to pay a thousand dollars to go three hours when, in reality, any Chinese person wouldn't have paid more than two hundred round trip? Damn. Yeah, yeah. I and so I, I'm hoping that my credit card company wins. I, I'm I I didn't receive an email from them, so they they keep asking me for the emails because that's how they're going to cover their ass. Otherwise, how do, how do you know? I mean, other than me clicking, I agree to this price. Hey, it could be a technical glitch. You know what I'm saying? It's a technical mm-hmm. glitch. That happened. How long ago did this happen? This happened a week ago. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is recent. Oh, and I'm not too happy about it because I a thousand dollars. you can. I've, I've gotten credit card challenges. Sometimes it can take up to 120 days or 160 days. Well, which I'm OK with because you don't you don't make that payment until it gets. I could wait four months. I don't really care. I just don't want to pay a thousand dollars for a plane ticket that shouldn't have cost more than two hundred, three hundred at the most. Oh, absolutely, nobody does. I could have used that to upgrade my seat from China to the U.S. <laughs> I could have gone business or premium you down there, economy. business class at that point. Yeah, business. Well, if you go to China, round trip business class is about seven grand. Let's say if you want to go to Hong Kong, if you want to do the premium economy, there's the economy, there's premium, which is right in the middle. That's going to cost you about. 2500 three grand regular regular economy tickets about 1300 or 1700 so it makes sense to be comfortable and just go one grade up business is almost seven grand so who wants to pay seven grand unless you've got millions or you know what i mean uh you know what and it's not even a business isn't what it was years ago like if you go to uh, if you go with emirates business and emirates it's worth Mm -hmm. it if you're going any other airline, the, the actual TV situated a certain way, it's really not that great. I heard Emirates or Qatar. Qatar or Airlines. Qatar. Yeah, those are the best. Correct. Yeah, but realistically, uh, 
I would only fly business class for the leg space. That's it. Right, right. But but I mean, like, if you look at some of these other airlines, I, I personally think it's useless to fly a Chinese airline business class because the way the seating's arranged, you can't even see the TV. And that's a 15-hour flight. And, and how long are you going to be in China? No, I came back a few days, like four days ago. Okay. Yeah, I was there for about a month. You be nice. oh. live about that. And, and how was that experience? Uh, I'm going to be very open with you guys. Uh, they're very anti-Western right now. I'm not trying to get pol political, but 80% no. of the foreigners left the country. When, when, as soon as China opened up yeah. uh, in December 2022, 80% of the foreigners left their country because it was an open-air prison. The only place you can go is a supermarket and your home, and that's it. You can't go to the gym. Damn, I ain't trying to go over there. What the hell? No, right. Well, these people were there for different reasons. I, I, I couldn't tell you, but uh, so here's what they do now. When I was going through customs from Hong Kong to Shenzhen, which is a 20 minute ride, car ride, I went through customs. The Chinese, the people, the Hong Kong customs doesn't say a word to you, dude. They're cool. They don't give a damn. But when as soon as you go into China, oh, you can feel the communism. Yeah. As soon as I, oh, yeah. the guy's asking me, where's your invitation letter? I've got a visa. Can you imagine somebody has, has an American visa and they're asking you for an invitation letter? You got In a China, visa. yes, absolutely. So he asked me for an invitation letter. I said, I, and I was tired. I, had, I just got off a 17-hour flight from the U.S. I go, listen, it's in my laptop. Uh, I'd have to pull up this site. It actually was on my laptop, but I was tired. I go, I got to pull up this website to pull it up. But, and then he started asking me questions. I go, look, here's my Chinese debit card. I showed him that. Here's my Chinese gym membership. I, I started showing him stuff to he so he knows I've been there before. And then uh -huh. and then he said, uh, "How long you stay?" And I said, "About a month." And it, it was about a five to ten mi minute back and forth. I would say it's an interrogation, but because mm -hmm. I was the only American or the only foreigner going through the border, everybody else is mainland Chinese. That was like that's reality. And right now, the United States has a level three warning: don't go to China. You, oh, might yeah. have a, you might have a hard time exiting. Yeah. You could, you could enter, but you might not be able to leave. And the truth yeah. is, between you and I, I've, I've never seen this before because I've been there a few times. I didn't see any Americans. I didn't see any Europeans. I didn't see I didn't see any American. Nobody. No Western. What the fuck are you doing there? I was First there for work. work for, <laughs> I was there for a company. I had to go. We had to go and I had to prove something for work and have to put some things together confirm everything's legit so then you know because we we still have them manufacture certain things and for the you know and rod just I mean, a quick question how does china like lock you in in their country though like so let me tell like, you what happened so 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 mm -hmm. here's what the issue you're gonna have getting in is gonna be difficult but getting out is even more difficult so what they're doing now for foreigners westerners mainly americans and then obviously some western european countries uh, when you're exiting the country they ask you questions like, do you have a Chinese name? You could look black American, white American, whatever you are. They're going to ask you. They never have done that before. So what they're doing now is doesn't matter what you look like. They're going to ask you that question to see if you get nervous. And then they're going to like, it's, there's just questioning. Do you have a Chinese name? Well, if you're black or white American, like why would I have a Chinese name? Right. So they're preventing Americans of Chinese descent from leaving the country. And they're they're holding them to get their parents to either pay taxes that they owe or get them to come back to the country because they're anti uh, CCP. That's happening a lot to a lot of American uh, children of American uh, Chinese. Mm. So there's a level three warning from the State Department. It's, it's it, which is level four is the highest. So level three is pretty high. So exiting might be a problem leaving the country. And and to be frank with you. You can't run across a border in China. It's not like the U.S. Well, you run across the border if you, you know, worst case scenario, that doesn't happen in China. There is no borders. You're just stuck. Yeah, they um, I noticed that, too, man. Like when I was when I was going to Thailand, usually I fly through China Airlines. They, they, had, they didn't have any flights going through there. And I had to play. I had to pay out the ass like round trip Thailand, man, going through other airlines. Man, it was bad. Right. 
I, I think they decreased the amount of flights coming in from China and vice versa. Both countries have decreased it. Um, the actual Most likely not only China, now, but Russia. Russia probably has the same issue right now. People trying to fly into Russia. The only people out. I've seen in China really quick, I only seen Africans, South Asians, like Indians, Pakistanis. And then I seen uh, Africans and Eastern European, mainly Ukrainian and Russian. That's all that was there. There you go. Great. They got the movie yeah. times. Interesting. And, and, wow. and, to, and to be frank with you, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you really have to go, I would not recommend it. Even if you want to see the Great Wall of China in Beijing, I would not recommend it. The, the sentiment, I, I had something happen to me. If you guys you guys want me to tell you a quick story or you want me to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Qu quick story and then we're going to do final thoughts. Perfect. Listen, I went to a small city. I, I told you guys I booked a flight for $1,000. I don't know how the hell that happened. It shouldn't have been that. I go to a small city, connected, get to my destination. I, I get to the airport. I book the closest hotel uh, five minutes away. I get there at 11 p.m. I give her my American passport. The front girl, the employee, front desk person, she says to me in Chinese, and I have a Chinese elect, electronic Chinese translator. She says to me in Chinese, your nationality are savages. I was like, mm. what? I, I, I actually, I because I, I, you got to talk into it. You can talk into it in English, the translator. It's an electronic device. It translates. Someone. You talk in English, it translates in Chinese. So mm -hmm. I said, did you say my nationality are savages? She said, yes. So Ooh. then I had, to, I had to ask her again. I said, I'm sorry, did you say my nationality? She goes, yes. So it was 11 o'clock at night. What do you think I did? I want to go to sleep. So I left right. it alone. I went up to my hotel room. Check this out. Two o'clock in the morning, the hotel I was in, I get there at 11 p.m., go up to my room, take a shower, go to bed. Two o'clock in the morning, somebody rings my doorbell. No. Check this out. Let me tell you what happened. No. The hotel was one of these antique hotels. It's really weird. It looks like it's all like, you, you know, that, that old furniture your parents had, mm, that type right. of stuff. So it was like an antique hotel. I don't want to say it's 100 years old, but it was an antique. So check this out. Somebody rings my doorbell, but not like a normal person. He rings it 20 times in a row. Ding, 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 ding. 20 times in a row, right? Not only does he do that, he starts banging. Bang, 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 right? I thought, right. I thought the hotel was haunted. I opened my eyes. I swear to God, I thought it was haunted. I, I was like, because it's weird. You're 2 o'clock in the you don't expect that to happen to you, right? So I wake up. I open my eyes. All I hear is somebody banging and ringing at the same time, 20 times in a row. Not no ding dong, right? It's like continuous, right? So I said, oh, shit, is this place haunted? So I got up really slow. I'm a military guy, so I'm analyzing the situation. I said, okay, one or two things is going on here. It's either haunted, number one, or there's somebody trying to get me to open the door. And you're about to get rousted. And I'm about that. Exactly. And now I was going back to what happened when she said your nationality are savages. So I started thinking, oh, shit, I'm not opening that door. Let me wait. So I waited about three to five minutes and I looked through the peephole. And you don't ever you never want to look through the peephole right away. So I, I waited three minutes, looked through the peephole, didn't see anybody. Waited another two minutes. Then I opened the door. I see a guy with a white shirt on some shorts. Keep in mind, in China, if they're delivering anything, they got a delivery outfit on. It was a small town, so it's a whole different story in a small town, I'm guessing. White shirt on shorts. I thought the guy was a ghost. He's 20 feet away from me, and I was like, am I seeing things here? I was like, I was like what's he doing here at 2 o'clock in the morning? He's not a delivery guy. So I started yelling at the guy like I was crazy. Right. Like, so when I started yelling, he got so scared. He sat on the floor. <laughs> he got. He actually sat on, and I'm not a small guy. He sat on the floor, and I went back in, and I, I closed the door and locked the door. Right. I called the front desk. I used my translator. She hung up on me. So I'll tell you what I think happened. There, there's a lot of anti-American sentiment in China right now. I'm in a small town. It's even worse. It's like if you know, if you're familiar with America, you guys probably are. Uh, most of you guys are. You have the cities, and then you have the small towns. In the smaller towns, people are more ignorant. I was in a small town, so there's heavily indoctrinated to be an anti-American. 
So I'm guessing she sent him up to my room. He was a delivery guy. There's 300. So basically, he was a black dude in a small country white town. <laughs> All right, right. Well, check this out. So she did. I think she sent him up deliberately because I'm American. You, you know what I mean? So she, at two o'clock in the morning, she she screwed up my sleep. Now I can't go to my work meeting in the morning like a normal person while rested. First thing I did was as soon as I got up, I used my translator. I asked for the manager. She came over. I said, listen, I said, look, I'm American. Your employee at the front desk said this. I, I don't think you guys have a word. And I even used a Google Translate. I translate. So you guys don't got a word for American savage, right? There is no Chinese word for savage. She started saying Yaman. If you look up the word Yaman, that doesn't mean savage. Then she tries saying, oh, I meant I thought you were from this other country or some shit like that. So she was trying to defend what she said. And then she pulled up the camera. There's no justification for him ringing my doorbell 20 times and banging on the door like that. That was done intentionally. That was malicious. So that's my story about the anti-American. And I, I'm not paranoid. I even had a Chinese engineer tell me, right now, we don't like you guys. A lot of companies are leaving China because of you guys. We don't like America. Like, they're telling you this. Like, they're actually right. – a lot of them are going to hide it, but you'll, you'll, you might get lucky. They'll tell you the truth. Gotcha. All right. With that, final closing thoughts. I'm going to go around. Uh, Buck Travel, starting with you first. Final closing thoughts. Buck, coming in once, coming in twice. We'll circle back to him. Ronan, final closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the initial conversation, which was on uh, right. uh, self-improvement and the boxing. You know, um, I, I believe that uh, Milano, while being able to man up and uh, meet you in the ring, he wasn't dedicated to even trying to learn the craft of uh, attempting to even box you. <laughs> You know, yeah, anybody can swing on a, on a lucky night and, and get one lucky hit in, you know. But if there's no power behind a hit, is it really a hit? You know, did you Facts. really get waylaid in the second round or did you just get caught off guard because you were you were out of breath? You know what I mean? Right. So right. At, at the end of the day, I commend him for that. But it, 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 it doesn't matter whether he was overweight or not. He, he could have put in some training and, and got some strength training in to where he knew how to throw a proper punch with the proper torque on his uh, midsection and, and his stance in order to deliver some power. Cause I saw the way he was hitting you in the midsection during the first round. I was like, damn man, what is he pity patting you? Like he was hitting a, 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 a heavy bag, you know, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> you know? So yeah, it, you could definitely tell whatever lies he was telling on razor rays about having experience in the background from martial arts to, you know, he punched somebody that was a pro fighter and and knocked him down and i'm like yo okay right he, he's good at telling a story and stretching a yarn and that's great for entertainment purposes so you know unfortunately he took down his youtube channel but at least he manned up and uh, took his ass whooping like a man and paid you your 500 dollars. the champ is here <laughs> yes sir yes sir no cap final closing thoughts yo what's up um yeah i, th I think just going back to that guy um I, he's like a perfect example of a uh, of a. Uh, yeah, it's over, but he can still go overseas and, and get something. So for all those guys who were drowning in the incel pill, red pill, look at Mulano. It, it, it's physically over for him, but he can still go somewhere and get his needs met, and he's proven that right in his channel and shit. Awesome, awesome, no no doubt. Uh, just John, final closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I guess going back to the topic, you know, I'm surprised Milano manned up, um, you know, because at any point he could have just said last second, he said, hey, I'm staying, I'm dipping, I'm not going to fight you, and he actually fought you, man. So, um, you know what I mean? Got to give him props for that. Uh, for two, man, there's always a place for everyone, man. Uh, I, I remember yesterday, Greg was on the show, man. I wish I would have told him this yesterday, but, you know, it sounds like a lot of the countries where he's been to, they sound very touristic in the places that he's been man i wish he would have mm. i wish i would have told him about a place like bolivia or something like that maybe right. have a little more success but i don't know man that's my final closing thought 
Okay, cool. Uh, Rod, hey, appreciate you coming through. I'm sorry I mispronounced your name because I've been drinking a little bit, but man, you're always welcome to come through. You're a big supporter of Razor Ray, and I thank you for coming through tonight. Yeah, thank you. You know what I'll say is Milano is just entertaining, man. Set, set everything aside. I think he was just talking to talk like anybody else. They're going to hype themselves up. He knocked himself out in the ring, to be honest with you. Right? But the guy's very entertaining. I think he already had plans to to shut down his channel. I I think your fight was just an excuse to shut it down. He He's oh, probably wow. not getting enough view. I, I don't know, but he already had plans. Right. But nobody shuts down a channel because they're getting knocked out in the ring or being moves and stuff like that. But but going uh, back to self improvement for a second, that uh, that's right. self improvement. It's every day. It's like getting up, brushing your teeth. Yeah, it's, it's something that you incorporate in your lifestyle. It's not easy, man. You want to eat right? You just try to do your best. You're not going to be 100 percent perfect, but you do your best. Right, like like how how I eat these baked Cheetos, which is processed food. This is a cardinal sin right now, but that's okay. Yeah, but you don't do that often. So, so I mean, right. it's just, you know, it, that's going to happen. You're going to have those cravings. But again, yeah, it's just uh, self improvement. It's an everyday task. It's just make sure you uh, incorporate that in your life. And that's pretty much it. Nice, nice. HB Gone Global, thank you for coming through, brother. Thank you for rocking out the full three hours. Uh, final closing thoughts. Yeah, man. Just like uh, you said, man, they can. Man, level up, man. Man, get mm -hmm. yourself to the gym. If you just ugly and you funny looking and you weird looking like mulatto, it's just no help, man. But um <laughs> for you guys that <laughs> there are not, man, get in the gym, man. Like work harder, man. Um uh, freaking man, eat some more eat some more fruits, man. For you for you for you fill your refrigerator up in your freezer, man, at least with some frozen some healthy stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Nice. nice. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't take nothing. To freaking eat healthy, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just if you're not doing it, you're just making excuses. Um, and, and 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 to be honest with you, I am guilty of you know what I'm saying, not being my best. But I'm still working on myself every day. And also, I'm trying to go to Mongolia next year. That's a that's a gym, hidden gym that a lot mm -hmm. of people know about. Um, I told you about the Mongolian chick that came to see me. Yeah, she, um, she receipts, receipts. Go to my channel on my on my live. You can subscribe to my channel, HB Going Global, and you'll see. Um, so she's a two time bodybuilder. She has her own television show. She so she got bread, and she was telling me about like, like it's like, like the Mongolian chicks out there. They fuck with brothers, but ain't no brothers out there. So that's like a little hidden gem right there that I'm giving y'all, and I'm going out there next year. But um. I appreciate you nice. having me on and shit, man. Right. When, I, when I'm done editing this live, I got to feature you, but I still want to do a solo stream to feature you. So FYI, okay? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, man, we definitely got to get down to Mexico together, man, because you know where I'm at. So um, right. as, soon, as soon as I get my passport in, uh, I got to I'm, I'm telling you, Vera Cruz is, man... You're going to get spoiled, man. Like, Shorty is just like, touchdown, like, come through. Already in the red zone, you know? But cool. Uh, Buck, are you still there or no? He might have went to sleep. All right, final closing thoughts. QB Passport flexing. Back-to-back -back live streams. Uh, appreciate you guys rocking out with me. I got to get back to the vlogs, which I'm going to be doing. So it might be a little while before I stream again. So check out some more Ecuador vlogs. I got some Colombian vlogs. Uh, I'll be in Oaxaca in two weeks. So got to tap in some unfinished business. But hey, hit the like, subscribe, subscribe to HB Gone Global. Subscribe to Buck Travel's channel, and I will holler at you guys later. And...